a presentation of K-Star 49 Sports. The home of the home teams. Live from the Fort Worth Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas, it's Western Professional Hockey League action. Tonight, the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. Tonight's Fort Worth Brahmas hockey game is brought to you by Chevrolet, the official car and truck of the Fort Worth Brahmas. Train, heating, and air conditioning. It's hard to stop the train. And by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. And by Coors Light, the official beer of the Fort Worth Brahmas. And welcome to the Fort Worth Convention Center. We're excited, the Fort Worth Brahmas, in what we understand to be the first ever professional hockey broadcast out of this facility, which was built in the late 1960s. I'm Mike Barrick, the general manager of the team, and we're excited this evening to have a special guest on this broadcast tonight, a future NHL Hall of Famer, eighth all-time in goal scoring in the history of the National Hockey League, Brett Hull. Welcome to the broadcast, and it's a first for you, a first for us, a very exciting night here in Fort Worth. It is, and I'm looking forward to it, hoping uh, to see some hard, uh, hard, hit, hard play and hard hit action out there. Well, we should have some fun uh, this evening, and I understand this is the very first uh, broadcast for you? It is. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've always wanted to be up in the booth, and uh, I, I hope I do a good job for you. Well, it'll be fun this evening. Let's take a look at some of the players we'll be uh, uh, focusing on tonight. The first, a youngster, 21 years of age for the Fort Worth Brahmas. He scored the game-winning goal on Wednesday night. Chad Woolard, Todd Lalonde is very excited, the Brahmas coach, about Chad Woolard, and he will be a force up front tonight for the Fort Worth Brahmas. And for the Corpus Christi Ice Rays, a gentleman very well familiar to fans here in this area, Alex Kolomaya, ninth year pro, six of those nine years he played either for the Fort Worth Brahmas or the Fort Worth Fire, and he'll be a, a, a difficult foe for the Brahmas to keep off track tonight. Alex Kolomaya for the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. Let's take a look at the standings in the Eastern Division of the Western Professional Hockey League. And as you'll see, the Brahmas in dead last. A tough year for Fort Worth. Fort Worth with 12 victories on the 2000-2001 season. They'll try and win the game here tonight. And Corpus Christi in fourth place, tied for fourth. The top four teams in the Eastern Division make the playoffs. So a very important game tonight for the Ice Rays as for the Brahmas here this evening. So that's a uh, look at the uh, standings, and Brett, uh, as mentioned, uh, we should be in for a, a great night tonight, uh, and we usually have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, when we come back, the play-by-play, -play, the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays on K-Star 49. And welcome Emily Moreno and singing guard. is hot, look for the silver shine of a frost brew Coors Light. Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy duty pickup you can get. And the 2001 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Silverado Heavy Duty. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. The stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowitzki, and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lovett Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the convention center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. I see coats. They're closing! Hand over the coat, sir! 
nice and easy now. Let's have it. Look, there's a lot of people in line here who need to do their banking. Yeah! Hey, buddy, they're just normal people like you who just don't get out of work in time to get to the bank. So, come on. Their kids could go hungry, you know? Look, Regis! Ooh. Okay, people, there's nothing for you here. Let's move in an orderly fashion to the Bank United inside Kroger. They're open late, they're nice, and you won't feel like this. <laughs> Welcome to the Fort Worth Convention Center. Just prior to action, the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. Mike Barak alongside Brett Hall. Should be in, as mentioned, for an exciting game here this evening. Let's take a look at the uh, goaltenders of record here tonight. First for the Fort Worth Brahmas, Rob Laurie. 38 games, 10-22-3 and three at 3.55 goals against the ninth-year pro out of Western Michigan University. Rob Laurie gets the start tonight for the Fort Worth Brahmas. In goal tonight for Corpus Christi, Eddie Stakazic. He's 5'10", 170-pound, 26-year-old from Lockport, Manitoba, 16-10-2 at 2.86 goals against average. He uh, played uh, previously in the West Coast Hockey League, but last year also played in Corpus Christi. So he's a, a strong goaltender. They have a youngster as a backup, so uh, you will see a lot of uh, Eddie Skazik here tonight. On the ice uh, this evening, as you'll see uh, in uh, games here in Fort Worth, a lot of pregame activities. The Brahmas introducing a group with the uh, Corporate Care Program. Uh, companies in the uh, Tarrant County area uh, can purchase tickets and donate them to charity. Look at the Fort Worth hockey history, and Brett, it's long standing. Going back to 1941, the Fort Worth Rangers, a Rangers affiliate, New York Rangers, and then the Fort Worth Wings, the Fort Worth Texans, the Fire, and the Brahmins. So there's been hockey here in Fort Worth for a long, long time. Well, it sure has, and I think that's what uh, the, the North Stars were thinking, and uh, they knew a strong hockey base was down here when they thought about bringing the uh, Dallas Stars or to the North Stars to Dallas to, be, uh, to become a franchise down here, and uh, the support that they've given us has been fantastic. Going back to the wings they were a detroit red wings farm team the texans uh, won a championship here the fire won one uh, and of course uh, the brahmins reaching the finals in their first year in 1997-98 uh, honorary captain uh, with arby's uh, tonight they have uh they have representatives from the fellowship of christian athletes and a look at todd lalonde just joining the brahmas uh replacing Ken Carpock. Two victories, including his first at home on Wednesday night. Took over a team in last place. Brett, that's always tough for a head coach. Well, it's got to be. And uh, coming into a new situation, trying to learn the players and uh, uh, getting a feel for a new city. So uh, he's got a little work ahead of him. But uh, you know, if he keeps that nose to the grindstone and uh, uh, has a lot of respect for the players, don't play for him. A look at uh, Taylor Hall, player in the National Hockey League with the Vancouver Canucks and the Boston Bruins. He has uh, been a tremendous coach in the Western Professional Hockey League. In fact, he's number two all-time in wins. Todd Brost of the El Paso Buzzards, the number one leading coach. Taylor Hall, seven wins away from becoming the all-time winningest coach in Western Professional Hockey League history. So uh, Todd, Todd Brost, an old teammate of mine. Yeah. Uh, up in uh, junior in Penticton, British Columbia. And he had great success here in the uh, in the WPHL, and I'm sure as we talk about things tonight, a lot of former teammates, uh, Brett, for you as we go through the evening. Uh, as mentioned right now, uh, honorary captain uh, uh, going on with Arby's, and a look at Ross Harris. Harris had 54 goals a year ago for the Brahmas. We'll feature him during one of our intermissions tonight. Ross Harris, a key to the Brahmas offensively, 27 years of age, again, 54 goals last year. He's on the main line for Fort Worth with Chad Woolard and Justin Cardwell. And a little bit more activities probably in the WPHL than in the NHL, Brett. They go right to it in the National Hockey League for the most part. Well, I think you have to do that, uh, you know, to, to, to get the fan base and to uh, bring attention to the uh, uh, to the game and to uh, get the community uh, support. And it's important. And uh, I think actually the NHL could do more of that. Well, we'll see if uh, that happens in the future. As mentioned, uh, uh, the Brahmas, uh, as do most teams in the Western Professional Hockey League, have a lot of activities. A look at the Brahmas bench. Again, the team 12-33-3, but Todd Lalonde coached the team to a victory on Wednesday night. His first behind the bench for the Brahmas at home, so he's undefeated. A wide look at the Fort Worth Convention Center. It's a beautiful place for a hockey game. You see this, uh, the stars and stripes, the uh, shot clock up on the side. There's a horseshoe here in this building, Brett. So a 11,000 seat capacity, and uh, we'll have a lot of noise here tonight. The referee Chris Brown, Doug Whittick, and Sean Kramer are the linesmen, and we're just about ready for hockey. Well, let's get her going. It should be a good game tonight. Brahmas on the line up front of Willard, as mentioned with uh, Cardwell, and also for the Fort Worth Brahmas, Ross Harris, we're underway, and Dan Volanov for Fort Worth gained uh, possession. It's 
swings it on the boards on the wing out the center, and uh, the Brahmas gain possession for the moment. Willard is knocked off the puck, and finally uh, Fort Worth gained possession. Ross Harris sends a pass across for Willard. It's broken up for the defense and taken by Matt Chiruga. Drops it back for his own defense, and the Ice Rays gain possession early on. Just 30 seconds into the opening period. No score between the Bombers and the Ice Rays from Fort Worth, Texas. Loose puck in the slot, and Corpus Christi gained possession. They flip it out the center ice, and Mike Tilson, second-year Bomber defenseman, gains possession in the neutral zone and plays it right back into Corpus Christi uh, territory, and they clear it to center. So early on, play from blue line to blue line. It's a little bit scrambly, but uh, I think they're just trying to get a little tempo going and get the puck deep and uh, try to establish a forecheck. Here's a lead play up the left wing side, deep into the Fort Worth zone. It should be an icing back after Ben Gorwich, a 26-year-old out of Wisconsin. Taking a look Zinfeld at Zinfeld Ben Gorwich and the icing the on the play all the way back. No automatic here, icing in this league. Ben Gorwich is mentioned from Thornhill, Ontario. And uh, last year he played with the Missouri River Otters of the United Hockey League in St. Charles, Missouri. Look at Rob Laurie. Color coordinated with the pads and everything here. Yeah, it looks like a, he's a future NHLer with that, the equipment he's got on. Here we go. Play underway in uh, the ice race game possession. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast tonight. We have Brett Hall alongside, and we're very excited about that. Great crowd here at the convention center for a Saturday night game against the ice race. And Corpus Christi gain possession at their own blue line, and they take possession of the neutral zone. And Corey Evans just plays it right back to the Fort Worth goal. Brown has gained possession. They try and clear to the board. Mike Rusk, a newcomer on defense, plays to the blue line. Ice Rays play it back in, and Rusk for Fort Worth leads it for Gorwich. He pats it down. Break the center ice to Steve Dowie. In across the line. Plays it across, and the pass free on the left wing side for Craig Johnson just off the mark. Johnson a backhand. That's broken up with the defense and cleared to the near wing. Big Craig Johnson plays defense and forward. However, the ice breaks uh, break out. Two men to center into the forward zone, and a Perhaps a penalty. Let's see. Chris Brown. Now we have pushing and shoving. Clint Cabana going to go at it. He'll have a fight right off the bat. Cabana flails away with an ice race player in the far wing. And I believe that is uh, Alex, is that uh, Alex Kolonayev? He flails away. It's actually Corey Evans. What a fight. Corey Evans and Clint Cabana. Cabana with a right hand continues to flail away. Evans fights back and Cabana falls on top. The leading penalty player in the Western Professional Hockey League. Clint Cabana, he's under contract with the Vancouver Canucks. Tell us about that. What? Yeah, they're big, tough kids there. And that's, uh, I don't know the steps to that dance out there, but it's, uh, they're two tough guys. And there's been some big hits early and uh, a couple of good scoring chances. So uh, it's been a good start so far. And uh, a couple guys going toe to toe and letting them. Uh, well, uh, the penalties, five each, I'm sure, for fighting. And uh, let's take a look at uh, Brett on the replay on a breakout into the forward zone. Yeah, it was good back checking, Aaron. He just uh, he tripped him up and caused the offside. And uh, from there, uh, tempers. And then we're going to take a look at the fight upcoming as the ice rays worked in across the line. I thought, Brett, that there might be a penalty on that play. I think that, that was a pretty good non-call there. He, uh, he got him with a lot of body as well as the stick. And there's a look and at... There, uh, they, <laughs> there they go dancing and... Uh, that was never a big part of my game, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often for you, does it? No. <laughs> a minute, minute 53 gone into the first period, and that we'll see if it creates some interest. He actually, Clint Cabana, is under contract to the Vancouver Canucks, the only player under contract to the Brahmas to an NHL contract, and uh, he's leading the league in penalty minutes, and sometimes, as a defenseman, that's a way to get uh, some notice. It really is. Uh, you may think you're quite a ways away, but there's ears everywhere, and uh, I'm sure the Vancouver Canucks are hearing about uh, his aggressive and uh, willingness to go in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and stick up for his teammates. I'll tell you, there has been a lot of interest among high Hockey fans with uh, Cabana's uh, presence in Fort Worth uh, this year. Meanwhile, teams at even strength. The time of those penalties, 153, and uh, Cabana, 24 major penalties on the year. Here's play at the uh, Fort Worth blue line, and Mike Tilson plays it up the middle, deep into the Corpus Christi zone, and the ice raid, Jamie Hearn, gains possession. Rama's in a four check. Tilson not flying. No call there, and the play back behind the goal. That scrap earlier, Corey Evans, a former Brahma, last year played 20 games with Fort Worth and had 40 minutes in penalties. There's a chance for the Brahmas in front. Skazik, the save on the player cutting in. Mark Zacharias from the left of the goal. Hearn trying to sweep it free to the blue line. Harney controls for Fort Worth. Jake Harney 
and the puck deflected into center ice in the bottom of his game possession and cleared right back in offside at the blue line. 2.51 gone into the opening period. We've had a scrap already. No scoring plays. No goal so far for the Brahmas or the Ice Rays. And a look at number 28, Mario Dumoulin, a, out of the uh, Quebec major ranks for the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. 263 minutes in penalties last year. So he's uh, kind of a tough guy, and we'll see if we see much of him tonight. So. We're back to action. Brahma's game possession. Much of the play, Brett, in the neutral zone. It really is. And that's the way the game's kind of gone, whether it's at uh, the NHL level or the uh, minor league level. And it's uh, a lot of strategic defenses and, uh, and, and, and kind of punk possession plays. And you try to spread, spread the defense out and move it past them. And uh, there's been a couple of good chances. And, and the uh, ice raised goalie made a great save a few minutes ago. 2.59, gone in first period, no score, and we'll talk to Brett about the, his career at the minor league level, and it was a brief one, of course, uh, with his tremendous success in the NHL. Here's puck loose at the defense, Brahma's try and clear it to center, Woolard after it, Brahma's gain possession in the neutral zone, they try and work it for, uh, for Woolard. It's Harris and Woolard up front for Fort Worth, then Gorwich as well. Teams at even strength and cleared by the ice rays into center ice. Brahmas Willard, the 21-year-old, plays to center, and Ross Harris and across the line. Harris drops it for Gorwich. Gorwich trying to stick it to the ice rays defense and Corpus Christi. Play the puck to center. Two on one break developing. It looks in front of the goal. Lurie, the save. It was set up on the left wing side by Lane Rowland. Play now into the corner. Rowland for Corpus Christi. Tries to work it free. Kurt Wickenheiser. And Lane Rowland, these are the two leading scorers for the ice race, but Gorwich breaks back for Fort Worth. And backhands on edge into the Corpus Christi zone, so a good scoring chance for Corpus Christi. Very good. It was an excellent play on the two-on-one, committing the defenseman to the, uh, uh, to the guy with the puck and moving a great pass across to Wickenizer, and another great save by the Fort Worth goal. Rob Laurie on the stop, but no score. Just uh, four minutes gone into the opening period. Great crowd tonight in Fort Worth. Hockey! On the other side of the Metroplex here tonight with the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. And the play deep into the forward zone. Mike Tilson gains possession, flips into the boards on the left wing side for Harney. Play now back of the net. Tilson tries to dig it loose. Mad scramble behind the goal. Wickenheiser now tries to work it free. Dumps it in front to the slot. Chance for the Ice Rays, but taken by forward Johnson. Johnson covers up a man along the far boards, pushing and shoving. Loose puck in the slot. Watch out as Sharuga shoots one. That deflects wide. Back of the goal. It is the forward, Paluzio, trying to make a play. But the Brahmas, Craig Johnson on the boards on left wing. Clears, but not out. Sharuga keeps it in for the ice. Race. Shoots one. Laurie gets a leg on that. A lot of pushing and shoving with Mike Tilson. And also up front for the ice rays. It looks like the forward, Wickenheiser. Brahmas break back. Johnson shot up into the stands in a stoppage of play with 5-11 gone into the opening period. No score between Fort Worth and Corpus Christi. And we're going to take a break here. No score between the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. You're watching Brahmas Hockey on K-Star. Well, I, I decided tonight's the night I'm going to pop the question. So did you get the ring yet? No. I had a better idea. I wanted to get her something that says, I'm really in this for the long haul. It's a train. What? I'm making a commitment here. You know what people are saying about you guys? That you're a bunch of vicious animals. Well, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that this is a game of skill and precision and speed and grace. So I want you to go out there tonight and show them what Fort Worth Promise Hockey is really about. Okay, you can open the cage now. Fort Worth Promise Hockey, it's a kick. Back to action here in Fort Worth. Visit the Fort Worth Brahmas website at www.brahmas.com for the latest in Brahmas information. That's www.brahmas.com, the official website of the Brahmas for merchandise and ticket sales. Great uh, place to see what's happening. Hockey here in Cowtown. 
There's a long shot right back into the forward territory in the Brahma's game possession. Mike Ross, he started the season with the Odessa Jackalopes of the WPHL. Lead pass ahead for Ben Gorwich, sticks it into the ice race territory. David Bork takes a check. Gorwich in a fourth check and falls on top of the loose puck. And uh, there's a Mr. Ray Bork that plays in the NHL, and uh, I don't believe David yeah. Bork is a relation. A little bit different <laughs> style player, I think. But right there, uh, if the Corpus Christi uh, defense partner holds up uh, on the uh, Fort Worth board, he can get that puck and wheel out of his own. But instead, he gets a big hit into the boards and uh, possible turnover. And that's what you like from the Brahma's perspective for sure, right? Exactly. The faceoff will be deep to the zone, circle to the right of the net, and the Brahmas sent out Chad Woolard up front with uh, Justin Cardwell, the captain, and Ross Harris. Cardwell leading the Brahmas in scoring this year with 55 points. Puck loose behind the goal in the ice race game possession, and it is the defenseman Hearn hounded at the uh, blue line, played a center ice, and Russ drops it back. Five minutes and 50 seconds gone, first period. No scoring, one scrap in this thing. Corey Evans and Clint Cabana dropping the gloves in the first couple of minutes. Here's Hearn on right wing, able to stick the puck to center ice. The ice rays cleared right back into the Fort Worth territory. Laurie lets it go for his own defense for Rusk. Ice rays trying to work it in the slot on the far boards. Jeff Bumstead after the loose puck. Bumstead on the near side. Now we have a scrap in front of the goal. It is Wingfield for Corpus and Dan Vilna for the Brahmas. Wingfield throws a couple of left hands. The Lions been trying to separate right in the slot in front of the goal and we'll have a stop here. But I'll tell you what, uh, the second fight here in this opening period. Well, I, got it. I think it could have come at a uh, better time for uh, Fort Worth as uh, Corpus Christi had full possession of the puck and uh, looked like they had some open ice and all of a sudden the whistle blew and they were going at it in front of the net. So uh, sometimes it's not a bad thing when fights break out. We'll take a look at it, Brett, and how this all started. Well, it looks that much it, it looks early like, on. It right? looks like someone just decided they didn't want to play anymore <laughs> and went and wanted to fight. It wasn't uh, didn't look like anything was uh, was bound to aggravate. And, uh, yeah, we're cost, really like slash team, or anything like yeah, that. They he, just he, looked at each other and said, "Let's go." He cost his team a good scoring chance, but that's uh, that's all part of it. Todd Lalonde looking uh, over and surveying the situation. It looks like Villeneuve and Wingfield, five each for fighting. Villeneuve for the Brahmas, 6'2", 220. A last year played for Indianapolis of the Central Hockey League. Uh, Taylor Hall barking things out to his uh, players. I'm sure, and, uh, I'm sure both coaches would appreciate if there was a few more guys on those benches. Yeah, <laughs> it's tight early on. It, it read 16 skaters and two goaltenders. The Brahmas have a player, Jason Payne, suspended. You were amazed early with the 15 and two. <laughs> well, I would I would love that because it would give me more ice time. But it's, uh, it's just not something you're used to seeing. Here's play behind the goal, and Russ plays it on left wing. Unlike three lines and four lines. Four lines and here's a play now back of the goal. The ice rays try and dump it in front. It's cleared back of the goal, and Roller tries to push it on the boards, and it's up in the stands on the far wing with. 6.33 gone into the opening period, no score. And like you said, at this level, not uh, really having to worry about ice time, especially with penalties and, you know, a couple of fights, and they're down to 10 or 11 players on the bench. Exactly, and it seems, uh, you know, like the room on the bench, there's a lot of room out on the ice, and if they can just get it and, and move it to the open guy, there should be lots of room for, uh, uh, for them to create some offensive chances. Casey Hungo for the Brahmas, also up front, Craig Johnson. This is kind of the mucker grinder line for, for, for Fort Worth, uh, Brett. And uh, every team needs yep. those. That's, uh, that would create the room for the, uh, the more skilled guys. You love those muckers and grinders, don't you? I sure do. Here's play now back at the, uh, the uh, ice race defense, and Mario Dumoulin gains possession. 6.46 gone into the opening frame. No score. Glad you've joined us tonight on K-Stop. A historic, an historic broadcast. Uh, for hockey here in this city. Here's a play across the line. Bumstead shot off the mark to flex wide. They clear it right back to the corner. Promise flip it on the opposite wing. Ice Rays push it back of the net. They try and wheel it in front to the side of the goal it goes. And Komalayev unable to gain possession. Fort Worth gain the puck for the moment there at the center. Played from blue line to blue line. Casey Hungle played with a Tupelo T-Rex. In for Gorwich shoots, and a save made by Skazik. A long shot, Brett, but, uh, but quick and uh, unexpected, so I think it surprised him a little bit. And uh, uh, It's not always how hard, but uh, it's how quick you can get away and how you can surprise the goalie, and there's a case right there, and uh, he had to make a great save. 
We'll take a look at the replay here. And Brett, you it know was about a shooting it was, Yeah, it was a turnover by Corpus Christi, and he used the defenseman as a screen. And, uh, you know, it was kind of an off-balance shot, which may have even uh, surprised the goal even more. Well, he made the uh, splits on that, made the uh, save, and I guess, uh, Brett, with over 600 NHL goals, I guess it shoot from anywhere, right? Well, not always. It was kind of earlier in my career, but, uh, you know, it, you got to spread it around, and there's a lot of guys do a lot of work for you that you'd like to get the puck in and uh, get them some goals at times as well. Here's a play now back of the goal, and the ice race uh, game possession, Hearn, back of the net. No score, 12-29 remaining in the period. The Brahmas come in into the league dead last in goals. However, ranked 11th of 13 in team defense. So goal scoring for the Brahmas has not been there a lot this year. Here's Dowie moving it across the line. Hands it free to Cabana. Shoots. Gazek to save the rebound. He falls on top, pushing and shoving. Return to the left of the goal. And man, a lot of physical activity. Ross Harris pushing with a Corpus Christi player, but a great scoring chance, Brett, for the Brahmas. Fabulous. It was a great play coming out of the, uh, the Fort Worth end and and uh, quick play through the middle of the ice turns into a two-on-one. It was uh, a great save, and uh, you got to have the guy driving the net like he was, trying to get the rebound, and uh, he almost stuffed it in. Clint Cabana took the shot, then two more players coming in after Could've the been, play. It was a dead whistle. It should have been called. The puck was never smothered, so it's, uh, you know, you go to the net, you take those little sparks and put them in. So. And Zacharias put it in after the whistle had blown, so no score, 12-11 remaining in the opening period. Skazik's played well, and a look at Mark Zacharias, second stint with the Brahmas this year. Here's a play in front, Zacharias, couldn't get the shot off, it was deflected away. Steve Dowie drops it, white point, Cabana closing in, a wrist shot, that's blocked off the defense. It's played into the corner, Dowie for Fort Worth, surveys the traffic, cuts to the slot, tries to work it free. Zacharias and Dowie after the loose puck, but it's taken by Bluzio for Corpus. Can't clear the zone. Dowie tries to cut it in front. Centers in front. Save made by Skazik on Ross Harris, but perhaps I a stop to play a hand pass. It, no, I think it was a high stick. Yep, high stick. But it's some good forechecking and some nice plays coming out of the corner. And uh, you just, you know, you, as forward, you hate to see that make a good play back to the defense. And uh, they either take too long or. Uh, Okay, we're going to take a break here. No score. Brahmas and the Ice Rays on K Star. The sleek 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Hot. The side you show the world is up to you. Monte Carlo, we'll be there. Every morning for years, these guys have come into Waterburger to start their day. They make a beeline to the coffee, and then they sit down in the same booth every morning. They order a hot, fresh breakfast on a bun. They swap stories. They have a lot in common, but when it comes to their breakfast on a bun, they all want it their own way. No matter how you like it, whether it's crispy bacon or sizzling sausage, breakfast on a bun is just 99 cents. I know all their stories by heart, and I'm going to get to hear them all over again tomorrow. Breakfast on a bun in Whataburger, just like you like it. Brom is back in action Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock against New Mexico. Big stretch of 17 games remaining in the season. Friday night against Austin, Saturday night Monroe. Corpus back in town, so a big month. Bikini night, February 23rd. Ice bats in February 24th. All tickets available at the Metroplex Albertsons or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. So a lot of activities. Brahmas have a ton of home games left here during the rest of the Western Professional Hockey League season. Have to get the date to that bikini night. February 23. You get your tickets early. I don't know if the Stars are playing that night. Here's Cabana. Or for Harney, shot to flat wide. It loose to the left of the goal. Cardwell after the puck. Cleared for Russ. His shot off the backboards and wide. The ice rays trying to poke it free. Cleared away with his glove by Harney. And then up the middle it goes. And Corey Evans, two on one break. Into the near side, a chance. Shot wide by number 77, Lane Rowland, who's been hot as a firecracker for Cor Corpus Christi. And the Brahmas break back to center ice. Chad Willard across the blue line. Wrist shot. Skazik skates it into the corner. And Evans gains possession. Last year, as mentioned, played with Fort Worth, fourth year pro. Evans plays into the Fort Worth zone. Rob Laurie himself pokes into the boards on the left wing. Zacharias swings back of his net. 10.38 remaining in the first period. 
No score here in Fort Worth. Casey Hungel in there across the line, but Gorwich ahead of the play, just offside at the Corpus Christi blue line. And you hate that as a coach when you have that offensive opportunity and a player just ahead of the play. Well, it's always, uh, as, a, as a forward, you don't want to make that little extra move at the blue line because your other guy's thinking you're going across and he's trying to get as much speed as he can. And another great outlet pass by uh, Corpus Christi to send uh, two guys in on a two-on-one and a great play. And all he's got to do is put it in the, uh, the empty net and he's got a goal. But no goal for the ice race. Great break for Fort Worth. No score, 10-29 remaining in the first period. Hockey, as mentioned, going back in this city to 1941 with the Fort Worth Rangers. This is the fourth year for the Fort Worth Bronx. They made it to the finals in year one, semifinals in year two, missed the playoffs last year and this year, having a tough win-loss record, but have a new coach and a new attitude on the ice, it seems. Here's play to the right of the Fort Worth goal. Brahma's trying to gain possession, but Fort, uh, and they finally do. Tilson pushing it on the board. Held in by Corpus Christi. Sean Frappier tries to dump it in front, but Cabana gloves it. Yeah, he and didn't look like he wanted to let go of that there. No. Rather hold it than yeah. uh, give it up, right? It's not a bad play if they're not going to get called. And the puck loose to center ice. You're supposed to throw it away if you gain possession like that. And now Cabana, instead of gloving it, uses a stick to pass it away. And here come the Browns. Across the line, Hungle. Wrist shot caught by Skazik. He holds on. And the Browns sent two men in deep. But Kate Skazik, no rebound, Brad, with two black shirt Brahma players right in front. Well, it was a kind of a delayed three on two. And if I, I think if he would have laid her back to the guys coming late, they could have had a better play. But uh, shot's never a bad play. Okay, if you're updating your existing home or building a new home, make sure your air conditioning and heating system is a Train XL Comfort System. Train builds the most reliable air conditioning and heating products for your home. I personally know the people at Train Heating and Air Conditioning. They're great, solid folks. They build great products and are good people. It's hard to stop the train. Great sponsors for the Brahmas since the opening year of the Brahmas organization in 98, the new organization led by Andy Moog, the president of the Fort Worth Brahmas. Here's play in the slot, Justin Cardwell. The Brahmas have actually outshot the ice race 6-3 in the first half of this period. They've controlled most of the play with some great scoring chances. Here's Woolard on the left wing side, tied up. Play at the center ice area. Krasnick now shoots one, and it's off the, uh, actually the, the uh, carpet area back behind that, the curtain behind the goal as uh, Krasnick let it fly into the forward zone. Tobin Krasnick, three years on a Lake Superior University, that's where he played, second year pro. Last year had 50 goals for the Ice Rays and uh, out of St. Andrews, Manitoba. Do you know where that is? Uh, it's, uh, it's in the cold neck of the woods, <laughs> I'll tell you that. You don't, want, you don't want to spend too much time out there in the winter, but it's, uh, it's hockey country. The uh, player Krasnick began the year in Germany and is uh, back here uh, in uh, North America playing for the Ice Rays. 9.05 left in the first period. A lot of players play in Europe. See, they don't like the situation or come back and there's a time to return to the WPHL and it's here in mid-February. Players can uh, join lineups in the WPHL as it gets close to playoff time. Here's Justin Cardwell on his backhand, shoots one. Skazik squeezes the pads together and holds on. The leading scorer for Fort Worth, Justin Cardwell, got that backhand off. Well, you can see that he's got a sense for the open ice uh, coming up through the center ice and another good outlet pass through him to the center ice and drove it wide and uh, tried to put it in, but another save by Skazik. Taking a look at some of the advertisers here at the uh, Fort Worth Convention Center and uh, quite a bit of activity. You see a look at Sprint, the Star Telegram, and now we're going to take a look at the hot and cold player update. Uh, the uh, Brahmas, of course, the hot player for Fort Worth, Mike Tilson. As a defenseman, five goals and an assist for the Fort Worth Brahmas. And the leading scorer, Kirk Wickenheiser, 49 points. The Brahmas have to cool off Wickenheiser. Train, it's hard to stop the train. Our hot and cold player update. You don't want to put the cold player on your home team, so we put the uh, it's stacked the, the, the guy perfect. Guy. You got right, him. right. Yeah. That Wickenizer, you can, he's a he's a hezzy player. He's already had two good scoring chances tonight. You can see why he's their leading scorer. Second oldest player in the league, by the way, Wickenizer, 36 years of age. I know how that feels. Huh? <laughs> the second oldest in the NHL, though I don't think. Close though. Here's a play across the line, a little snapshot, wrist shot actually, and falling on top, Rob Laurie, and makes a save. And uh, I believe Corey Evans not too happy about that little wrist shot 
that just really trickled lazily towards that Fort Worth goal. Well, I think he had a good screen with the defenseman and tried to tried to fire it by him and uh, kind of swing in a whiff, but uh, that happens out there. It's, uh, it's a quick game and a lot of... Uh, I can't see it being the best ice out here. No, it's in, not. In Soft. Downtown. Yeah, here at, uh, in this uh, building, it's relatively slow. Quite often they have the thickness here um, a little bit more than you normally would have. Maybe an inch and a half or two inches, maybe a little bit more than that at some times during the year. And there are other events in this facility quite often. So, uh, But I'll tell you what, the ice looks nice. Great logos on the ice uh, for the uh, sponsors. And... Uh, as mentioned, a long history of hockey. Uh, this building built in 1969. The, the teams have played uh, the uh, Fort Worth Wings, the Fire, uh, played uh, a championship hockey here. The Fort Worth Texans, although playing most of their games at Will Rogers, played some games here. And, of course, the Brahmas in this facility as well. A little slower than you'll see with the ice surface here in this building. Here's play at center ice, ice raise. Quickly, uh, Cheeseman shoots one. That's deflected wide. Here's Cheeseman again, tries to work it in front. It's deflected into the near corner. The Brahmas gain possession into the near corner. They flip it for Dowie. He is checked by Evans, play at the blue line, and the Brahmas break back. Dowie flips it right back into the Corpus Christi zone, and the Ice Rays gain possession. Eight minutes to go, first period, no score. Here before this big crowd in Fort Worth, play at the right point. Cabana closing in, shoot, stick save, Skazik, and he holds on. Once again, Brett, no rebound, but Clint Cabana, a fight in this game, and two offensive it's opportunities. Close, uh, we will take a break. No score here in Fort Worth. We'll follow up our thoughts in just a moment. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. Stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowitzki, and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lubbock Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the Convention Center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. This televised game broadcast is brought to you by Chevrolet. If only everything was as dependable as a Chevy, Chevy will be there. No score first period. Mike Barrack and Brett Hall from the Fort Worth Convention Center. No score between the Brahmas and our brethren from southern Texas, the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. And in, this is their third year in the WPHL and already a storied history. They've sold out virtually every game they've ever played in that 3,500-seat facility named at the Igloo in Corpus Christi. And the Brahmas gain possession. Up the center ice it goes. Mark Zacharias moving free across the line. Drop pass for Hungle. Three shot caught by Skazik, and again, no rebound. There was a short rebound, but Brett, he skated right off and covered. Well, it's good defense by the Corpus Christi defenseman taking that, the, the forward going for that rebound right out of the play, and he was unable to. And, We'll take a look at the uh, replay on this. The promise Hungle left the shot go. Skaza could uh, cover up the rebound. You see him right there on the left side of your screen. He's uh, taken out of the play and was unable to get to it. And, uh, some more good play by uh, Fort Worth. Uh, some good forechecking, some, some nice passing, getting it back to their D. And, uh, uh, they're, they're making good plays. And uh, if you keep doing that and keep getting shots on net and chances, uh, they're going to go in. Glad you joined us tonight. The first ever from Fort Worth, uh, the Brahmas. And the ice raids. Glad that the, the fans throughout the Metroplex have an opportunity to see what hockey's all about here in Fort Worth. The play now back of the goal into the Corpus Christi zone. Ross Harris trying to stick it free. Four players in a scramble to the left of the goal. And finally, it's taken by Kurt Wickenheiser for the ice raids. And the outlets on the right wing side and the two-man break to center ice it goes. And Joe Tobin Prasnick slides it into the Brahma territory. Lori himself slides it off the glass on left wing. Brahma's gained possession. They flip it ahead to center ice and Cardwell gains possession. Has Harris on his right. The pass, drop pass. Willard in front. Chance for Tilson, but it's blocked by the defense. 
great three-way passing combination into the ice race zone. It really was, and it started. There's nothing like a goalie who can move the puck. He got a, a bad dump by Corvus Christie and moved it up, and it started out a three-on-one. A great play, and uh, uh, nice, nice play by the Corpus Christie forward to get in front of that shot. Here's a chance for Fort Worth. Tilson ahead for Harris. It could be an icing. Back after Frappier, icing is the call. The faceoff will come all the way back into the Fort Worth zone. 6-12 remaining in the opening period. No score between the Bombers and the Ice Rays. Brett, you've played hockey at this level, maybe a little bit higher level, the American Hockey League. We'll talk about that in a moment. I want to mention the uh, group and ticket information. Call the Brahma's office for groups at uh, 336 for ice or for individual game tickets, call 888-597-STAR or any Albertson throughout the Metroplex. So uh, Brahma's tickets available throughout the Dallas, Fort Worth area, all Metroplex Albertson. We'll talk to, with Brad about uh, his play with the Moncton Golden Flames of the American Hockey League in just a bit. Brahma's clear it right back into the ice ray zone and Byron Poole out of Colgate University gains possession. No score, less than six minutes to go. First period, entertaining first period, although no scoring, or no, no goal so far in this game. Here's a play to the left of the goal. Brahma's clear, not out. Ice Rays try and push it in the slot. Laurie holds the crease and holds on. They actually covered that left post so that no rebound into the Fort Worth goal. Yeah, it was good for checking. They moved it out to, from the corner back out in a little, uh, almost like a, a pass shot, and it was deflected, but uh, but Lori had the, the post covered and the bottom covered, and uh, it was unable to go uh, past him. So it was a good play by Corpus we'll Christi. We'll take a look at it again as the ice rays had the puck to be left of the Brahmas goal. You can see it there. It was deflected, but uh, the defense had the guy covered in front, so he can't get a stick on it. And, and Laurie's got the rest of the net covered. So it, it was Jake Harney for Fort Worth, number six, that had his man covered to the left of the goal. The Brahmas kept the biscuit out of the basket here in the first period with no score remaining in the opening frame. Glad well, you joined us tonight from Fort Worth. The Brahmas in their black uniforms clear it to the Ice Rays blue line and actually deep into the zone with Corpus Christi just flip it up into the stands with a scoreless game. We're going to take a look at the Chevrolet out-of-town scoreboard, the Shreveport Mudbugs leading first place Austin Ice uh, Bats by a score of 1-0. Amarillo and Lubbock, the Cotton Kings, beat the Brahmins last weekend, leading the Rattlers 1-0 at the end of the first period. The Outlaws of San Angelo leading the New Mexico Scorpions 1-zip. The Tupelo Mississippi T-Rex leading the Lake Charles Ice Pirates by a score of 3-2. to two. So those are the out-of-town score, scoreboard. And a lot of old friends on that list, too. The, the Moore family owns the San, An San Angelo team, and uh, Dennis Marouk is a, is a big part of the uh, Lake, Charles. Lake, Lake Charles team. There are a lot of former NHL players that have had an association with the WPHL in the league's first five years of existence. Here's a little flip pass towards the Fort Worth zone, and Laurie leaves it for Cabana. Again, under contract to the Vancouver Canucks, plays it to the left of the goal. Big Johnson leaves it free to the near wing, and Dan Villeneuve, the defenseman for Fort Worth, on the outlet pass to center. Brahm is out shooting the ice rays, 9-4 in the first period, but can't buy a goal yet. They flip it to the top of the circle, ice rays gain possession, flip it on the boards on left wing, and here come Corpus Christi. They try to work it free for the forward Komalayev, Back of the goal, it's centered off the side of the net. Komalaya does dump it in front, and a little wrist shot deflected by Laurie into the corner. Ice Rays deep in a four check. Fort Worth trying to work it free. Woolard fighting it off with the Jeff Paluzio for the Ice Rays. Four players fighting hard along the boards. Paluzio gains possession, flips it to the slop of the Brahmas break back. Woolard to center ice. Stick handles and just dumps it right back into Corpus Christi territory. And Skazik plays it to the left of the goal. Non-stop action. It really is. It's been an action-packed first period with some good plays. And uh, uh, you can see with the limited amount of guys that uh, there has been a, a few good odd man rushes where they've just uh, put it in and changed because of the fatigue factor. Play down back of the goal. Brahmas train and work it free to the near wing. Scoreless game. Four minutes to go. Less than four minutes into the opening uh, period. Brahmas gain possession. They work it free for Cardwell. To Harris. In on net. Cardwell on the slot of backhand. That's blocked to the defense. Cardwell tries to dump it free and falling to the right of the goal. He actually didn't fall to the ice, but Skazik holds on. Cardwell a little bit frustrated. Got the shot off, but not where he would have liked. Well, it was a good play, and uh, the, the innocent shot from the goal line turned out to be a little bit scary as it was, as it was deflected and almost snuck in by the post. Okay, we're going to take a break. No score. First period on K-Star.
Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy duty pickup you can get. And the 2001 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Silverado Heavy Duty. Hey, beer man! One for the groom to be? Yeah. Bachelor party, eh? Well, this is Frost Brewed Coors Light. Are you ready for that kind of commitment? Yeah. Please rise. Come on, stand up. Do you take this can to be your very own? Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish every ounce of this Rocky Mountain refreshment? I do. I told myself I wasn't going to cry. If anyone here has reason why these two should not be joined together, speak now. Here, man. Oh, here. Oh, here. There you go. Well, they announced to the crowd that this game is being telecast live here in the Metroplex and a great round of applause. Great, great crowd here tonight. It really is. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm and they, uh, uh, they're getting pumped up for the fights and the good scoring chances, so uh, they're being entertained. They That's the most need important a goal, thing. Right? They need a goal. Yeah, they you can't, can't win without scoring. I know that for a fact. You would. I know. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Mike Tilson plays it free on the left wing side. Brahma's gained possession into the neutral zone, and it's cleared by Zacharias. He punches it behind the ice rays net. They clear it free to the blue line, and here come Corpus Christi into the Fort Worth territory. Three men back for Fort Worth. A great job of defense as Mike Rusk led the defense on the poke check. Here's play on right wing. Cardwell swings it left wing side. Zacharias shoots, skates it, kicks it aside. Play back into the corner. Cardwell for Fort Worth. Tries to dig it loose. Punches it free to the forward Zacharias and cleared by the ice rays out to center ice but the Brahmas are playing textbook uh, hockey here. here we are. Great, great play there. He felt the offside defenseman come and take him and just threw a kind of a uh, zone pass over to the left side uh, to the open ice and the guy was there and Zacharias made a great shot and a great save. Brahma's playing great hockey here in the first period. Coming back to help out the defense, the forwards for Fort Worth here tonight and play at center ice. The 21-year-old Chad Willard. Wrist shot. Kick save. Rebound. Willard himself to Gorwich behind the goal. To Dowie. Left to the net. Back in. Right through the goal crease. Nobody home. And the play now back of the goal. Ice raise. The Brahmas fiercely in a four check. Great four checking for Fort Worth. They seem Gorwich. to be inspired by their new coach. Here's Gorwich tries to work it for Dowie and it's cleared away. Yeah, they're working hard, aren't they? Doesn't look like a team with the record they have to me. They're uh, just yeah. controlling the play. Gorwich shot is stopped by Skazik, then Willard missed the rebound. Now the ice race on the attack, and Brett, you're right. The Brahma's playing inspired hockey tonight, and up into the stands it goes, actually up into the Visit curtain the area behind the, the net, but man alive, they're skating with a lot of heart tonight. They are, and they're forechecking well. They're making great passes, and uh, you know they're going to get one soon. Radio Shack is proud to sponsor the Brahmas, when you want to see the latest in home entertainment products, be sure to visit your local neighborhood Radio Chat team. They have a great starting lineup of Compact, Microsoft, Sprint, RCA, Verizon Wireless. They'll show you the latest technology and take the time to answer the questions you have. Radio Shack, you've got questions. We've got answers. Their corporate headquarters, about three minutes from the Fort Worth Convention Center, and they've joined the Brahmas this season, and the Brahmas appreciate the support of the local company right down the block, Radio Their Shack. Their bill must be something with huh? those lights on the buildings. <laughs> no doubt. Here's the play now to the right of the Fort Worth goal. The Brahmas play at the center ice, and on the far wing it goes, and Hearn at his own defense being hounded on the play, and they clear it to the near left wing corner. No score, late in period one. Brahmas in the ice rays, and the Corpus Christi on the attack. Krasnick now in against the defense. Tilson stays with him. It deflects him the corner. Bumstead now. Number 98. Centers in front. They shoot it wide, but a penalty coming up. This, I believe, will be the first minor call in this game. Whistled down by Chris Brown. As soon as the Brahmas touch it, a penalty and a power play coming up for Corpus Christi on the play. It'll be interesting. I didn't see anything. I thought it was good defense by uh, Fort Worth and a uh, uh, great defensive play by Tillman on the uh, on the rush, two on two rush, and he tried to take him uh, with a little nifty move and stayed right with him. Well, we'll see. Must have been a slash from the back side on the guy in front. They only have one referee, Brett, in this uh, Western Professional Hockey League. What do you think of the two referee system? Well, I think it's got its pros and cons. I think they get in the way far too much, but it, they also have taken away from the chippiness, away from the play, and on the uh, on the rushes coming back. And uh, so it's got its goods and bads, but it's uh, overall, I think it's working just fine. And again, in this level, the WPHL one referee, and as you mentioned, sometimes they'll miss things. 
But in this case, he caught the slash. Mark Zacharias, two for slashing at 18.55. You said it, behind the play, a slash. Corpus Christi on the power play, ranked number four. 43 power play goals and an 18.3% mark one on the minute, power play. Ramos, this would be a big kill for Fort Worth to, to control the play like they have up here and then to give up a power play goal and maybe a questionable uh, penalty. That would be too bad. So they need to kill this and keep the momentum going in their favor. One advantage, Brett, I guess, when you get a penalty in the last two minutes, it can break it up into the one period. If you can kill it towards the end, that's less time at the start of the period. Let's take a look at this opportunity for the ice race. Well, it's just a little wrist shot at the net, and uh, you can't score unless you put it there, and they had people there and uh, a couple of good whacks of the rebound, and uh, Laurie held his own. Okay, face off to the right of the net. Won't have a lot of highlights during our first intermission here, but a lot of uh, activities, and I uh, hope you stay with us during our first intermission. Jason Carey, the backup goaltender tonight with uh, Charlie Hodges. One of our features during our first intermission. Here's play at center ice. Ben Gorwich swings it right back into the ice ray zone. 38 seconds to go in the period. A power play for Corpus Christi, their first of the game. Ice rays dump it right back in over top of the net. Tilson turns, slams it outside the blue line and all the way down. A good play. Not a, a very questionable dump there by the Corpus Christi uh, defenseman. You have to get it on the board so the players can fight for it. And a little tougher for the... Fort Worth players to handle it as defensive players. The Brahmas loved it, however, as Tilson was easily able to clear the zone. Here's a play to the left of the net. Ice race center one right to the goal crease. Net is dislodged on a player cutting in the slot. I believe that was Sharuga in the uh, Fort Worth goal crease area. It's actually Dustin MacArthur who was uh, dusted in front of the net on that scoring opportunity, and we'll take a look. He's driving through uh, Corpus Christi Ford, taking it down the left side. He decided he wanted to Try and make a little bang bang play at the net and uh, posts hurt. I know that. You know, the uh, years ago, those posts didn't come off like That's they right. do now, right? Yeah, and there was always the V in the, in the bottom of the net. And uh, there was uh, one gentleman, Mark Howard, got seriously injured. Uh, with that. And I guess that's one of the out of the years of the technology has really uh, been perfected, I guess. Well, it is. It's safety, and it's uh, the players are so big and fast now that you go crashing into those nets, and if it doesn't give, uh, you know, something's got on it, it's usually not the steel post. Here's play at the point. Hearn shot blocked away. It skips to the blue line. Four seconds to go in the period. Brahmas take over, and that's it. The period concludes. No score. First period. The Brahmas playing a great hockey game out shooting and out chancing the ice race. I agree. It's, it was a great period for Fort Worth, not only uh, offensively, even though no goals, they had a lot of chances, but I think they were more physical and uh, they played a more up-tempo game. Okay, we'll take a break, come back with our activities during the first period. No score between the Brahmas and the ice rays from the Fort Worth Convention on Center on K-Star. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. The stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lubbock Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the Convention Center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. Well, I, I decided tonight's the night I'm going to pop the question. So did you get the ring yet? No. I had a better idea. I wanted to get her something that says, I'm really in this for the long haul. It's a train. What? I'm making a commitment here. from falling off my first two-wheeler. Does it still hurt? No. Will I get a scar? I hope not. 
There's another good reason to use Neosporin. It not only kills more strains of infectious bacteria, a clinical test shows that treating scrapes with Neosporin helps minimize the appearance of scars. Mommy. Prevent infection. Help minimize the appearance of scars. Use Neosporin every cut, every time. Welcome back. First intermission, Brahmas and Rays here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. I'm Charlie Hodges, radio voice of the Fort Worth Brahmas, along with Fort Worth Brahma goaltender Jason the Bear Carey. And you used to play for these ice rays. Uh, how do you feel about going out and, and taking these guys on? Well, you know, it's kind of tough, definitely, obviously. You're playing against your formal teammates, a lot of really good friends over there. Uh, things, unfortunately, just didn't work out with myself over there. They needed a uh, goal scorer at the time, and uh, Eddie Skazik's an excellent goaltender. They didn't need two of us, so I basically got shipped here, and the rest is history. How do you like playing in Fort Worth? You know, I love Fort Worth. It's a great city, great town. You know, the only uh, aspect that I don't exactly enjoy is the 12 wins and not making playoffs, but the people here are great. The fans are great. The, uh, build, the facilities are great. The great management's great. It's just an unbelievable time so far. Guys call you the bear. Why? What? brought that nickname around well uh, i'm usually running around bare naked no <laughs> no what it is is uh when i was younger when i was 14 15 playing junior back home in uh, winnipeg uh something stupid happened in the gay tv show the care bears mm -hmm. last name carrie all of a sudden it was care bear and went from bear cat to bear to you name it i've been called every bear in the book so it just stuck and some people said it's because because you're so huggable and cute. Oh, I don't think my wife would like that one. <laughs> uh, far from cute. I don't like cute puppy dog. I'm downright hot, I know. Okay. Uh, you were hot last year with the Central Texas Stampede, made the All-Star Game. Uh, Todd Lalonde is man you played for in Central Texas last year. You're back with him now. You're feeling about playing for Lalonde again. You know, I love playing for Todd Lalonde. I really think he's one of the premier coaches in this league. And uh, right now he's stuck in a bad situation where it's really tough to get everyone motivated including myself uh, last year with Central Texas that's a whole different year this year it's unfortunate they had to fold but uh, with Todd behind the reins for the end of the year hopefully we should pick some wins up here and if he come back next comes back next year you know he definitely he's a coach can lead a team to a championship if he comes back next year you would you like to be back with the Brahms oh definitely I'd love to be back with the Brahms as I said it's a great city great fans I feel very welcomed here um, Todd you know, I think he's one of the best coaches in this league, at, if not in minor pro hockey. And I'd surprise to see him back himself because, you know, he really deserves to be on bigger and better things. Yeah, fans around here are very, very used to the, the NHL and the, and the type of travel with the NHL. This is a totally different setup, a very regional league, bus travel. What's it like at this level of hockey? Three ring circus. <laughs> Clowns, big shoes, funny red noses, that's about it. The travels, you know, it's horrible. It's for the love of the game, for the, well, the old analogy. That's what we're playing for. You know, we're not making millions of dollars far from it. We're, for example, last night we're in Corpus Christi. We drive on the bus all night, get, get home this morning, 6 o'clock, sleep. All of a sudden we have another game tonight at 7.30, and tomorrow we have a 3 o'clock game in the afternoon. So, you know, right now it's just a big love of the game. That's all a lot of these guys are here for. we got a lot of older guys. we got some young guys like Clint Cabana, Ryan Shannon, Jason Willard, those guys themselves, they're young, they can play hard, they can really make a name for themselves. Us older guys, we're just playing because we love the game. And there is a good chance to move up, possibly get to the NHL. There's some players in the East Coast League who have moved up. There are a couple of players in the WPHL who have moved up to the International League and the American League. So there is a dream that everyone follows from the coaching staff, the, the trainers, the managers, even y'all. Oh, definitely. You know, you always say that too. You know, the dream is never dead. Never dead. You never know. You might have that flash in the pan one year where you might get a break to go to the IHL, play a few games, turn a few heads, and all of a sudden you're in the NHL, turn a few heads. But, you know, that's slim and none. You know, you've got to really look and look into it in a positive aspect of having fun, play for the game, and when hockey's finished, you know, pick up your headset and ask, would you like that supersized? <laughs> uh, have you given any idea besides, you know, how to flip the burgers uh, to, wh to what you're uh, vocation will be after this game. Well, I find four minutes on each side, you get it well done. So other than that, <laughs> no, I've got my degree, so hopefully when I get home and hockey's done, I'll be able to jump into a job. And uh, with the hockey and having the minor pro experience and a professional experience, you got a lot of people out there that'll actually hire you just for that reason. And it's not who, it's not what you know nowadays, it's who you know and wh what you've done. So, you know, that's really a great aspect of the game itself. Degree in, in what and from where? Agriculture in uh, University of Manitoba back home in Canada. Yeah, you're in the perfect state to practice that ag degree. That's 
Definitely, I can milk a few cows in my day. <laughs> okay. Jason Carey of the Fort Worth Brahmas. He is going to be in goal tomorrow afternoon when the Brahmas take on the New Mexico Scorpions right here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. And you can get your tickets right now by dialing 888-597-7827 and get your tickets from Star Tickets. And if you're out and about tomorrow, go by your local Albertsons locations. Tickets for all Brahma games are purchased at Albertsons. That does it for our first intermission activities with Jason Carey. We'll be back with more Brahma's Hockey coming up on K-Star 49. The sleek 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Uh, hot. The side you show the world is up to you. Monte Carlo, we'll be there. Frost brewed Coors Light. Nice choice. Thanks. Nothing like some ice cold Rocky Mountain perfection to wet your whistle. Yeah, you sure know a lot about beer. C come here often? I haven't missed a game yet. Really? Did this get any better? Wow. You're spilling your beer. She's a beer man. Your beer. Whoa. Hey, she goes. They're closing. Hand over the coat, sir. Nice and easy now. Let's have it. Look, there's a lot of people in line here who need to do their banking. Yeah. Hey, buddy, they're just normal people like you who just don't get out of work in time to get to the bank. So, come on. Their kids could go hungry, you know? Look, Regis! Ooh. Okay, people, there's nothing for you here! Let's move in an orderly fashion to the Bank United inside Kroger! They're open late, they're nice, and you won't feel like this! <laughs> you know what people are saying about you guys? That you're a bunch of vicious animals. Well, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that this is a game of skill, and precision, and speed, and grace. So I want you to go out there tonight and show them what Fort Worth Promise Hockey is really about. Okay, you can open the cage now. Yeah! Fort Worth Promise Hockey, it's a kick. We're going to take a look, uh, Mike Barrick and Brett Hall, at the convention center for the uh, Sonic Youth Hockey Challenge. In between periods of Brahma's games, they have uh, youth hockey teams that can buy 100 tickets and get an opportunity to play at the convention center in between periods of a professional hockey game. Tonight they have teams from Polar Ice, they have teams from Skate in Texas this year, we've had teams from Blue Line, from the Star Center and Euless, uh, all over the place with the kids being able to play between periods here in Fort Worth. Well, it's nice for them, I'm sure they're having a good time out there. You know, the little guys get to play in front of the hometown fans, right? Well, it's a dream come true, and the, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a thousand people or ten thousand people, uh, uh, they're just having the time of their lives out there thinking that they're NHL stars right now. Brett, uh, I know uh, you played a uh, little uh, minor pro on before you played in uh, minor professional hockey, played in the college ranks, but talk to us a little bit about, you know, as a youngster growing up, uh, did you aspire from when you were a little kid to play in the NHL? Well, I think uh, everybody... ...thinking that they're NHL stars right now. Brett, uh, I know uh, you played a uh, little... Uh, Minor pro on before you played in uh, minor professional hockey, played in the college ranks. But talk to us a little bit about, you know, as a youngster growing up, uh, did you aspire from when you were a little kid to play in the NHL? Well, I think uh, everybody growing up in Canada wanted to be a, a professional hockey player, and especially with uh, my dad being Bobby Hall. Uh, that was something that we just kind of took for granted that we wanted to do. And uh, But the great thing about it, well, there was no pressure. We were, uh, we were told to pick a sport, go out and uh, uh, do the best we can at it, and from there uh, aspire to be as good as you can at whatever you do. Well, we're going to take a look, uh, Brett, at some activities here in this first period. There were no goals scored, but we're going to take a couple of uh, scoring chances here in this first period. This one for Corpus Christi. Yeah, here's a two-on-one, and, and the forward makes a great play, making the defenseman commit to him and makes a great pass over to Wickenheiser. Uh, and uh, the goalie made just a great save coming across with the puck and keeping the pad on the ice. That was Rod Lorre for the Fort Worth Brahmas, and then a little later in the period, the Brahmas were out shooting Corpus Christi. Did in that first period 12-10. Here's a Fort Worth scoring chance. That's right, good. This was a shot a little off balance, but using the defenseman as a screen, and uh, the goalie had to make a great save because it was such a quick shot and uh, he wasn't ready for it. 
And here's another activity in this first period. It's another look at it. Uh, ben Gorwich winds up, takes that shot. Skazik makes the save. The Brahmas had a chance on the rebound, then a great poke check. Yeah, it was. It was a good defensive play and a bad turnover for uh, Corpus Christi, but uh, off the rebound made a great save. And, of course, a no scoring on our scoring summary here in the first period. So that makes it easy, Brett. No goal scored. The Brahmas out shooting the ice race 12-10 in the first period. No goals, but a lot of action, a lot of good chances, and a lot of good defensive plays and great saves. We'll have more from the convention center. The Brahmas and the ice race. Hope you're enjoying it here tonight on K-Star. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lubbock Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the Convention Center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. Well, I, I decided tonight's the night I'm going to pop the question. So did you get the ring yet? No. I had a better idea. I wanted to get her something that says, I'm really in this for the long haul. It's a train. What? I'm making a commitment here. You know what people are saying about you guys? That you're a bunch of vicious animals. Well, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that this is a game of skill and precision and speed and grace. So I want you to go out there tonight and show them what Fort Worth Promise Hockey is really about. Okay, you can open the cage now. Fort Worth Promise Hockey, it's a kick. What you do with the savings is your business. Big Juicy Chicken is ours. Now, eight big pieces dark, family mash, $5.99. Country fried steak, mash and biscuit, just $1.99. Mike Barrack and Brett Hall, that is right, the eighth all-time leading goal scorer in NHL history, 80-plus goal scorer in the NHL. We're very proud to have Brett Hall here tonight. No score between the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. A look at Bruiser, the purple mascot here in Fort Worth. When have you ever seen a purple bull in the state of Texas? Well, not for a long time. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the old commercials with Schlitz Malt Wicker, but that was about <laughs> it. This guy skates, too. He does everything. Yeah, I was going to say, he looks like he could be uh, one of the guys if they needed to suit up someone. You never know. Here's a look at the upcoming promotions. Mavericks night. Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash will be here on Friday night, the 16th, to sign autographs. Next Saturday, Hughley Hospital Youth Jersey night to the first 2,000 fans, 12 and under. That's a great promotion. And then... February 23rd, that's Friday, February 23rd, there will be young ladies and young men bidding for prizes between the periods. You won't want to miss Bikini Night, February 23rd. Tickets available at all Metroplex Albertsons or call Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. Mavs Night on Friday, Hughley Hospital, New Jersey Night on Saturday night, and then next uh, Friday night, the 23rd, Bikini Night, and again, you want to see some, you know, we it's affordable family entertainment here sure. in Fort Worth. It's affordable pricing and so on and so forth, but that's a little bit crazy might, here at the convention center. Might have to bring a rookie out here with yeah, his uh, speedo. We'll have to make, we'll see. <laughs> um, upcoming in February, the Coca-Cola Minyard Puck Night on February 24th for the first 2,000 fans. Harris Hospital Poster Night with the Healthy Goals will be Corpus Christi on March 2nd. And then this game will also be on television, the final game against the Bossier Shreveport Mudbugs. Promise Trading Card Night. Lots of promotions at the end of February and early March. Again, tickets available at all Metroplex Albertson or call Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. All kinds of promotions in the second half of the season. And, Brett, as you mentioned, uh, not NHL hockey, but I'll tell you what, it's affordable. It's still ice hockey. Hockey. They still are on a 200 by 85 foot ring. It sure is, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. And you, you look around, and the fans are having a great time. And 
uh, with the with the community uh, support, uh, uh, it's just going to get bigger and bigger, and that's uh, that's all you can ask for. And of course, the Brahmas thank the Dallas Stars. Great relationship in the last four years, and the Stars have been very receptive to the Brahmas and their activities here in Fort Worth. No score after one between the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. Bruiser and the fans will be back in just a moment on K Star. Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy-duty pickup you can get. And the 2001 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Silverado Heavy Duty. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. The stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Sir, nice and easy now. Let's have it. Look, there's a lot of people in line here who need to do their banking. Yeah. Hey, buddy, they're just normal people like you who just don't get out of work in time to get to the bank. So, come on. Their kids could go hungry, you know? Look, Regis. Ooh. Okay, people, there's nothing for you here. Let's move in an orderly fashion to the Bank United inside Kroger. They're open late, they're nice, and you won't feel like this. <laughs> you know what people are saying about you guys? that you're a bunch of vicious animals. Well, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that this is a game of skill and precision and speed and grace. So I want you to go out there tonight and show them what Fort Worth Promise Hockey is really about. Okay, you can open the cage now. Fort Worth Promise Hockey, it's a kick. Mike Barrick and Brett Hall from the Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas. The Brahmas and the Ice Rays, no score. Brahmas out shooting the Ice Rays 12-10 in the first period, and yet no scoring in that the first frame. The Brahmas getting that first shot off, Brett. They need that second rebound, try and create some activity in front of the goal yeah, they, in this period, too. They need to keep driving the net and getting those rebounds and uh, keep moving the puck well through the neutral zone and creating those three-on-twos and two-on-ones. And uh, they also have to be careful. They're, they've given up a number of two-on-ones. And with the people on Corpus Christi, like Wickenheiser, they're going to uh, bury one. And uh, when you're having trouble scoring, you always want to get that first goal. Brett uh, Hull alongside Mike Barak uh, here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. Talk to Andy Moog, the president of the Brahmas, and he says he remembers an NHL. I asked him if the NHL had ever played in this building. He said the uh, Dallas Stars and the St. Louis Blues in 1993 in an exhibition game, and Andy remembers you scoring a goal. They actually bust over, the Stars did, here to Fort Worth, played the game. You were with the Blues, and he said he remembered a goal scored. So you actually skated on this ice, whether you remember it or not, but it happened. Andy remembers it vividly. Well, Andy would because he's uh, he, he was one of the greatest goalies ever played in the NHL, and uh, he didn't give up too many. So uh, he probably remember that. Whereas uh, you know, exhibition, um, I'm not really paying too much attention, so I, I have trouble. But, Wherever uh, you got to go, you get on the plane, go when they tell you. Right? But it was good to bring hockey, uh, the NHL game, to Fort Worth here, and and other cities like Oklahoma City, where I've also played the exhibition games. We are here in Fort Worth, Texas, the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. Brett Hull alongside, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, those exhibition games over the years, they brought it to different places to give the NHL an opportunity to expose fans that might not normally see an NHL game. Well, you know, they must have been thinking of expansion because they took it all over and uh, tried to spread the gospel of uh, NHL hockey throughout the country, and I think it's, uh, it's done very well uh, now with teams in Atlanta and Columbus and back in Minneapolis and... Uh, uh, you know, the, the further we can spread it out and the more popular we can get it, the, the better off everyone's going to be. Would you have ever envisioned there are eight teams in the WPHL, a team in Houston and San Antonio and Dallas, that there's uh, about 12 professional ice hockey teams in the state of Texas, number one in the uh, in the entire United States? Well, I, I think it's fantastic, and um, and it's it, and it's not like it was there and gone. It's here, and it's here to stay, and, uh, and the people are enjoying it, and it's a great spectator sport. 
Okay, here we go. Period two. No score. The ice race on the power play, Brett, we talked about it. The period concluded, which cut off the power play. There's still 54 seconds left. Well, it'd be a good kill. It's, uh, you always want that uh, power play with fresh ice, and Corpus Christi has that. But uh, if you can kill it off and get the momentum back and, and uh, take over where they left off in the first, they're going to they're gonna be in control. Here's Dubalin now, drops it back for his own defense. Brahma's standing four man back at the blue line. They're letting the ice race dump it into the Fort Worth zone and trying to stand up at the blue line. It's cleared into the corner. They work at Friel on the far side for Sean Frappier, the defenseman. Frappier shovels it back of the goal for Dumoulin. Brahma's trying to work it free on the right wing side. They try and chop it for Gorwich. Brahma's on the penalty kill. Hearn trying to play it for Corpus Christi. Brahma stay at the blue line. They block it free and cleared by Fort Worth and Willard pinballs it into center ice. Nifty little play, picking that out of the air and clearing it down the ice, and then some good forechecking almost uh, resulted in a short-handed chance. The uh, Brahmas watch the ice rays on the attack once more. Here's Wickenheiser, their leading scorer, dumps it back of the Fort Worth goal. Frappier tries to center one of the late man on the attack. Lowry the save on the shot from the middle of the blue line on a good scoring opportunity, I believe, by Frappier, the defenseman, and Lowry caught it also no rebound. That's a hard shot. Uh, the crossbody one-timer, I think he would have been better off grabbing it, corralling it, and walking in a few more steps, but uh, he got good one on it. And, and Lowry had to make a great save and uh, cover up the rebound. With a victory tonight for Rob Lowry, number one in goal for Fort Worth, he would become the all-time winningest goaltender for the Broncos. He is the all-time winningest with a victory. He's already the all-time loss leader for Fort Worth. It tells you he's played more games than any other netminder for Fort Worth. The number two man in wins that he's tied with, Steve Plouffe for the Fort Worth Promise. Here's Plouffe, the play along the boards, back of the goal. They clear it free to the far left wing corner, and the ice rays gain possession. Okay, to save on the penalty, Brahma's killed it off. Here's Ross Harris, centers for Cardwell. Loose in front, Cabana. They try and jam it free. Two players in front, the net dislodge. Cardwell thought it might go through, but it looks like a penalty, a hold against the ice rays. They just can't get a break. They're, they're getting good plays, good forechecking, turnovers, throw it in front. And the puck starts bouncing, and they just can't seem to get a, a hold of it to put it in. As you see here, it's bouncing. There's more rebounds, another whack at it. And they almost put it in their own net, uh, and it creates a penalty and a power play for Fort Worth. So if they can get a goal here and continue to, uh, to keep the pressure on, things are looking good. The penalty here, a hold uh, for Corpus Christi at 136 at Bork. David Bork, 23 years of age, out of uh, Sarnia in Kingston at the Ontario Hockey League. So the Brahmas gain a power play. Taylor Hall not happy about it at all. So the Brahmas have their first man advantage opportunity. Fort Worth on the power play. But well, we're going to go take a look at the replay, then we'll get to the power play percentage. Here it is. It's bouncing, and the goalie can't get even a good grasp on it. It's knuckling in, um, and there's a one whack and another whack at it, and then Frappier almost puts it in his own net. That would have been nice for the Fort Worth Brahmas. Nonetheless, no scoring play. The Brahmas rank 13th in the league. 37 for 251, 14.7% with the man advantage. The Ice Rays, number nine in penalty killing. Not that great, although they've scored 16 shorthanded goals. They're aggressive, one man short. Here's Rusk at the left point, holding on. Shovels it free for Justin Cardwell. Spins it into the corner. The Brahmas with the man advantage, trying to take the lead here in the second period. Russ shovels it free for Harris. Side of the goal as the Brahmas wheel and deal. Left wing point, Russ shoots, kick save, Skazik. And the rebound trickles wide. And they can't get that second chance. Play at the left point, Russ shovels it for Ross Harris. Back to Rusk at the middle of the blue line. Hands it free for Harris. 54 goals for the Brahmas last year. Fort Worth, right. Fort Worth seems to be a little more in control of their power play, knowing exactly what they want to do. Get a few more shots to create those chances. Uh, and uh, open guys for their plays. Here's Tilson, shoots it just wide. Rebound in front, Cardwell, they shoot it towards the net right at Skazen. Unbelievable, they had a wide open left side and somehow the puck did not go in. I don't know how that didn't go in. He had the puck with a whole open net, uh, all created by good, uh, good forward checking and a shot from the point. Here it is, here comes a shot from the Tilson. point. And the rebound comes from behind the net and it's thrown right in front. Cardwell actually had a player, I believe, station Ross Harris to the right of the goal open, and 
He shot it right into his pads. <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. Obviously not the gift of goal scorer. Because he is 54 at a four goals last year. <laughs> but this season he's been snake bit. He shot it right back the other way. Uh, he had that whole left side of the goal. And, you know, when it you know, rains, it pours for, uh, for a guy. They do a great job. They're moving it around well, uh, getting it to the right people, taking shots when they're open. I apologize. That actually was Johnson who missed that play, not Ross Harris. I apologize on that. Here's the play now back of the goal. It was not Ross Harris, and it was uh, it was Johnson on that play. Here's play to center ice, and Tilson swings around for Fort Worth. Uh, 40 seconds to go in the power play. And you were right on that because Johnson is not a gifted goal scorer, so you caught that one beautifully on your description. Here's the play on the right wing side. Brahma's play it across the line. They try and work it free. They use Johnson as a screen on the slot area on the power play to give the forward some room. Here's the play to the side of the goal. Dowie for Johnson. Left point for Rusk. 17 seconds to go in the penalty. Cardwell centers right under the stick of an ice rate player, and they clear it down. Uh, he didn't have to move that out. He had lots of time. Could have thrown it back out to the point and, and uh, regrouped on that power play. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to take a chance. Johnson, second in Austin in power play goals a few years ago, and Laurie falls on top on a blue scoring chance for the Ice Rays. Nice. He actually had 12 just on the uh, power plays for Johnson a few years ago. He actually had 12, and he did for, by parking himself in front. This time the Ice Rays a scoring chance. That was, uh, that was a good play, a nice pass across to Hearn coming in, and uh, uh, he's got a heavy shot, and uh, Laurie came out and cut the angle down and took it in the chest. Hope you enjoy the action. 16-22 remaining in the second period from Fort Worth, Texas. Great crowd tonight. This building holds just over 11,000. The Brahmas had a 9,000 attendance mark last year for a game with the Dallas Stars. They presented the Stanley Cup. We'll see a uh, little bit about all of that during our second intermission tonight. Here's a play into the far corner, Brahma zone, no score. Almost four minutes gone into the period, a chance for the ice raise, and a penalty coming up, and a shot by the forward, or the defenseman, Frappier, delayed penalty, six attackers for Corpus Christi. Evans trying to maneuver free. Brahma's finally take possession, and the referee, Chris Brown, going to call a cross-check against the Brahma's, and Ben Gorwich not happy about it. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, again, it's another call where I'm not sure where uh, uh, the penalty occurs. Well, we'll take a look in a moment. Meanwhile, we'll take a break. No score, second period. You're watching the Brahma's on K-Star. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. The stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lovett Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the Convention Center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. We're going, to take a, we're going to take a look at this penalty. Mike Barrick and Brett Hall from the convention center, which leads the Corpus Christi power play. There's the bottom left of your screen. There's Caban in front, and as uh, the shot's coming, well, I'm not sure that's a real uh, tough cross check to call, but uh, the ref thought it was. So You're right. It was, it was a little on edge. Yes. Nonetheless, the leading penalty player in the league picks up two more, so the power play now for the Ice Rays. They're 0 for 1. This is their second man advantage opportunity. Their other one went from the end of the first to the start of the second period. Here's Rust now behind the Brahma's goal. Swings into the boards on left wing to the right point. Hearn tries to play it free to the near side over top of the net by Komalayev. Brahma's take over and Hungle clears, but not out. Corpus Christi play it to the blue line, but Tilson able to clear it outside the line. Good play by the D to get that puck and get it out of the zone. Mike Tilson, the second-year defenseman for Fort Worth. It's been offensive as well of late. Brahma's clear up the boards on left wing, but not out. Right point it goes. Frappier tries to jam it free. At the right point, holds it in. Power play for the ice rigs. 
They clear it free, but intercepted by Fort Worth. Rusk, who clears it down, he beautifully was able to break up that pass. Rusk is having a, a good night so far. He's made some great plays at the blue line, uh, some good shots, and uh, right there, a great defensive play. Rusk out of Guelph of the Ontario Hockey League. Also, as mentioned, played for Odessa of the WPHL, and I offside on the play. 50 seconds to go in this uh, power play. 14.44 left, middle period. No score between the Brahmas and the Ice Rays. And the faceoff will be outside the blue line. A look at Mike Tilson, a defenseman for the Fort Worth Brahmas. He wears number 44. He's 22 years of age from Pickering, Ontario. He played juniors with four teams in the Ontario Hockey League at 211 penalty minutes two years ago in the United States Hockey League and uh, scored uh, 30 points for the Brahmas a year ago. He's a tough kid, the officer. Play at the right point, Hearn now, plays to the middle of the blue line, and it's taken by Dumoulin across to the far side. Lurie able to fall on top. They shot it from the opposite wing, I believe, Frappier, and Lurie fell on top with a nice rate player in front. So this time it's uh, Rob Lurie with a beauty into this uh, Fort Worth zone. Good puck movement on that power play. Got a good look from middle of the ice. He decided to move it over to the offside. A good one-timer, and it uh, looks like the cross-check here was a little more severe than the one uh, a little bit earlier they called well, you know, it's hard to give that two-man advantage on plays in front of the net. The, uh, the Brahmas may have gotten a break on that one. Here's play at the middle of the blue line. That was close to being offside. Dumoulin on his backhand. Centers, but cleared away. Some Brahmas had defense. three or four players in front. Tightened up that slot. Yeah, Corpus Christi, if they want to get it, they got to work it to the outside and back to the point uh, and get some good shots from back there. Because uh, if they're going to try to make plays in the slot, uh, there, there's just too many... Fort Worth players. Are. Here's a play back of the goal. Lori himself plays into the boards, not out. They fight for it ferociously into the corner with Johnson. Johnson, who's playing defense now on this uh, Corpus Christi power play, able to outlet for Gorwich. Here come the Brahmas to center ice. Rollert and Gorwich is the two penalty killers up front with just two seconds left. That's it on the penalty. Cabana is back on. The Brahmas have killed it off, so Corpus Christi 0 for 2 on the power play. And the ice rays maneuver to center ice. A backhand of the Fort Worth blue line into the far corner Brahma's end where Tilson himself just smacks it off the glass. Not out, however. It is Frappier trying to work it free for the ice rays. They have two players deep in front, or back of the goal rather. Tilson trying to kick it free. Woolard after it also. They try and poke it in the slot. Brahma's clear, not out. At the right point, Frappier plays it behind the goal. They try and work it for the forward lane, Roland. In front, they score! A great three-way passing combination, and the Ice Rays take a 1-0 lead. Well, it's just good hard work down low by the Corpus Christi forwards, and then as it came out in front, they made a nifty play, and uh, he put it upstairs over Laurie. Not much he could do there. I believe the goal scorer was Wingfield to the right of Rob Laurie. We'll look at it here. Brett, it's an even strength situation as Roland set up the play. Here he is working down low, and he makes a good play, and he comes out, nifty backhand pass, and then another one right after, and then a little just a little chip shot right over Laurie. Uh, that's good, and Cabana was just a hair late coming back on the back door. Wingfield scores the goal for the Ice Rays, 25-year-old, uh, big penalty player, 500 penalty minutes in two years with the ice rays but scores the goal and corpus christi a one nothing lead wingfield scores it on the assist bork and also wickenheiser time of the goal 649 into this period we'll get that uh, goal score number for wingfield in just a moment and the puck go loose now and it's center ice and cleared right back in and the brahmas gain possession well, that's not what you want to see if you're a Fort Worth fan because they've controlled the play the whole game and then to give up a goal like that uh, to fall behind. That's his 11th goal of the year for Wingfield and a 1-0 ice raise lead. Brahmas take over. Dowie now tries to dump it in front in Corpus game possession. What a downer after the Brahmas have played so well in this game so far. Cardwell on the boards on right wing is taken out of the play and big Corey Evans plays it to the Fort Worth blue line where Big Johnson gains possession. He played with a Central Texas Stampede earlier this year. Puck loose at center ice and cleared right back in. The assist on the goal from Wickenheiser is 700th as a pro. So a great story career at this level for Wickenheiser for the Corpus Christi Ice Rings. Here's play back of the goal. They try and work it in front for the Brahmins gain possession. Up ahead to center ice and Dowie, the former Odessa Jackalope checked on the play. 
Harris trying to dig it loose also at center ice. Harris on his backhand just flings it to the Corpus blue line. So this game moving along fairly quickly. one nothing ice race. We're almost halfway through this thing. Here's Hungle back of the goal, tries to work it free. And the Brahmas gain possession back of the net. The ice race starting to put on a little bit more pressure here into the forward zone and they freeze it back behind the Brahmas net. 11-24 left in this second period. It is 1-0 in favor of the ice rays. We'll be back with more from the convention center. You're watching Brahmas Hockey on K-Star. The sleek 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Uh, hot. The side you show the world is up to you. Monte Carlo, we'll be there. Welcome, Miss Planet Contestant. Hey, Bearman! Oh, it's the last one. Ladies, tell me briefly why you deserve this frost brewed Coors Light. Because the silver can shines like a beacon of freedom. Mm. Like the first cause light, I am pure and also born in the mountains. Yes, you are. I deserve the cause light. Because I said so. We have a winner! She's the one. 14 years professional, a number of those years in Germany. He finished first in scoring with 63 goals last year for the Corpus Christi Ice Race, 700 career assists. Now, not in the NHL, but it's still in pro hockey. That's great, isn't it, It Brett? sure is, and he should be proud of that. Uh, there's no question. And I think if Fort Worth's going to get back in this game, they're going to have to get back to getting it in, uh, getting physical like they were earlier in the first and uh, creating the turnovers. The Brahmas have not, as mentioned, been proficient in goal scoring this year, but they need a forecheck in order to make things happen. Here's Willard's shot, sticked away by Skazik behind the net. Fort Worth in a forecheck. This is the mucking, grinding line for Fort Worth with Zacharias and Hungle. A penalty coming up, thanks to hard work against Corpus Christi. A delayed penalty, six attackers. Lori skates to the bench. Back of the goal, Hungle after it. Brahma's still trying to forecheck, and as soon as the ice rays touch it, a power play coming up for Fort Worth. A key one here in period number two. That's yeah, dangerous. Anytime you're hitting a guy from behind when he's not looking and he's facing the boards, uh, that's when serious injuries can happen, and we're trying to eliminate from that from the game. Face-off will be deep into the fort, into the uh, Corpus zone. We'll take a look at this, uh, which will go to the Fort Worth Brahma's power play, thanks to hard work. You can see it here, they're fighting for the puck, and he's, he knows exactly what he's doing right there. Uh, maybe he didn't hit him too hard, maybe it was embellished a little bit, but uh, still, there's no reason to even push him. Dumoulin, the cross-check, 9-16, as mentioned, the Brahmins on their second power play. Another look from the different angle. It was just a simple scramble, and then again, Dumoulin came in with the cross-check. Brahmins with the man advantage. Ty Lalonde would love a goal right here. Yeah, it would be good to tie this game up and uh, continue the momentum that they had in the first and, and really early in the uh, second here. Here's the play to center ice, cleared into the Fort Worth territory, and Tilson swivels back. 10.35, left in the second period. Brahmas look for a scoring play. Up ahead on left wing, here come the Brahmas. Rusk swivels free, shoots it off the backboards, it's offside. With 10.24 left second period, one nothing in favor of the ice rays, and you don't want to be offside on that power play. Like you said earlier, Brett, you want to make sure you get it inside the blue line and then try to chase the loose puck. Well, you really do. You don't want to lose that momentum, and this is where face-offs are key, so you want to win this and get back in there and, and set it up and create some offense. This is Harris up front for Fort Worth. A look in the penalty box at Dumoulin as the Brahmins have this power play. Harris, Cardwell, and Johnson up front. As mentioned earlier, Big Johnson is the man that's going to give Cardwell and Harris some room on the power play. Clearing past the center ice, Tilson swivels back, losing the puck of the blue line, and then cleared right back in. Cardwell, 12 power play goals, and he is the second in the WPHL in that department for the Brahmas. He's the key offensively, wearing number 33, and gains possession, drops it back for his own defense. Well, they're a little ragged here with some bad passes. They need to get it tape to tape and get it up the ice. And uh, I'm not sure uh, Mr. Bumstead out there is the best or uh, most proficient uh, penalty killer. And he's changed now. They could have taken advantage of him. 
Here are the Brahmas now controlling on the far hash mark. They play at right point for Tilson. Brahmas with the man advantage as they try and set up. Cardwell back to the right wing point for Tilson. Flip shot in front of the goal. Cardwell leads it free. Saves Kazik on the drive by Ross Harris. Here's Tilson at the right point. Skies it towards the goal. Skazik jumps up, catches it, and holds on to alleviate the pressure deep in his own territory. Yeah, terrific chance. Good puck movement. The play comes out uh, a little pass through the middle, and it uh, bounced right back out. Uh, and there was a one-timer right from the slot. Just if he gets it up, it's probably in. But, uh, you know, the goalies today, they all have the same style. They cover the bottom of the net really well. We're going to take a look again on that is. play. You see it bounce right back there, and there's a one-timer right from the left side. Uh, the goal Goalie's down, the puck's on the ice, and it's uh, uh, as difficult as it looked. It's really quite an easy save for the goalie if it doesn't get up. Skazik, by the way, played at Cornell University in goal, and I believe Homa Ken Dryden. And uh, Homer Joe Neuendijk also played at Cornell. So two great NHL players. Of course, Dryden in the Hall of Fame, and uh, Joe Neuendijk has had a terrific National Hockey League career. It's a shot from the right point. Rebound. Roller kick. Shoot it free. At the right point, it skips over the tick, stick of... The defenseman tilts in a break for the ice race, and right into the goal it goes. Roy makes a save and a stop to play. I believe a breakout for the ice race. He's, he's looking for a penalty, but nobody touched him. I think he just fell off. It was Dustin MacArthur on that play. His and momentum carried him into the net. I don't think yeah. anybody touched him. He's there on a, a lone break, and his, I think if you come in and see, uh, he makes the move. Uh, he may have been poked from behind, but the uh, referee didn't see so. Well, I didn't think so. He didn't call it. But uh, another great chance in front. Uh, but for Fort Worth on the power play, they just can't bang over Remo. Yeah, the, uh, you don't want to give up that shorthanded goal. Uh, uh, already trailing one nothing. He's not too happy about it. Brett, you so know, I know, it, fit. I know I've read about you on breakaways. You'd rather have that wide open shot than the breakaway all along. Well, I'd them. rather shoot it with two guys on me <laughs> than a breakaway. I think too much. And uh, <laughs> that's maybe a lot he of did, trouble for me. <laughs> maybe he did too on that play. And you know, it's funny. It's a lot of it's natural versus the, uh, you know, just wind up and shoot. It really is. It's, uh, oh, there's a great pass through the middle. It just didn't connect. That was for Gorwich into the far corner. Brahma's the man advantage still for eight seconds. They try and maneuver it on the outside. Great drop pass into the far corner. Now to the right wing point for Tilson. Uh, play in front of the goal. Gorwich chance. Blocked off Willard into the corner. That's into the penalty. They try and work it free in front of the goalie. Score! Oh! A quick back backhander by Dowie. And this game is tied. What a piece. How about that for the Brahma? That was great work. Great puck movement. I'm not sure the first uh, wraparound effort didn't go in. Uh, but it came right out to the slot. And, and Dowie came in with a backhand and put it over the goalie. Uh, good puck sense, great great play on the backhand. Steve Dowie has been really snake bit. That's only his third goal for Fort Worth at 11-12, but let's watch it again. Great play from behind the net, and it comes around. And a good save on the rebound there. It's the backhand that goes upstairs. Uh, it was a good puck movement going from corner to corner and bringing it out the other side. And a uh, good save by... Skate. By the goalie, and, and then a great backhand as he was falling down by Dowling. Kind of came up. It's funny, he's been down a lot. It's worked for him much of this game, but this one over top, and Dowie for the Brahm is his third. This year he played in the Western Pro League with the Amarillo Rattlers. The Brahmas acquired his rights. Gorwich and also the Brahmas Woolard on the assist. Gorwich and Woolard. Dowie is third at 11-22 and this game tied at one and you know finally before this big crowd with all the opportunities they're able to put the puck in the net. Well and I think that's the first time they've ever gone up and tried to get it up above them and it goes in right away so uh, you got to remember when that puck's lying there all the goalies are down you got to throw it upstairs. But with all the goaltenders in the NHL I guess it would be hard to, to know all of them now. I mean, is it something that you watch during the game and can adjust in terms of these goaltenders in the NHL? Well, it's like I said earlier, I think they all play pretty well the same style now. They they put their paddle down on the crease, and, and when you're in, in tight, uh, you have to go over top of them because the whole top of the net is open. Here's play at the defense, and the ice race gain possession. That's what the Brahmas did. They put it over top and have tied the game at one. Entertaining hockey here from Fort Worth tonight. Glad you've joined us this evening on K-Star. And we're excited to bring it to you. Here's a chance off the goal post. A quick little snapshot, I believe, by Wingfield, and it cranked Great right off the coming, post. Great move coming across from backhand to forehand. He threw it right off the post. Very innocent, and then all of a sudden, it almost went in. Here's Hungle now for Fort Worth. Down the right wing side. Poke check, but still maintains 
the composure. Hands for the forward Zacharias. Behind the net for Hungle. Centers in front. Blocked away and cleared by the ice raids on the left wing side. Dumoulin in his center ice. Across the line it goes. Jamie Hearn, the defenseman, tries to make a play. Hearn now. Wrist shot. Lorries hugs the post. Sticks it aside. And Cabana leaves it for Cardwell. They scramble for it to the top of the circle. Chance for the ice raise. And a save made by Lorion Dumoulin with a wrister from the slot here in the second period. The Ice Rays buzzing to try and take the lead. A little bit of in that action there. And uh, it's up with Bumstead getting a chance in the slot and uh, kind of hit him right in the belly button. Okay, the score, one apiece here in Fort Worth. We'll have more on K-Star in just a moment. Well, I, I decided tonight's the night I'm going to pop the question. So did you get the ring yet? No. I had a better idea. I wanted to get her something that says, I'm really in this for the long haul. It's a train. What? I'm making a commitment here. You know what people are saying about you guys? That you're a bunch of vicious animals. Well, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that this is a game of skill and precision and speed and grace. So I want you to go out there tonight and show them what Fort Worth Promise Hockey is really about. Okay, you can open the cage now. Fort Worth Promise Hockey, it's a kick. Chevrolet out of town scoreboard is brought to you by Chevrolet. If everything was as dependable as a Chevy, Chevy will be there. We'll get a couple of scores in here just a moment. And we'll get to that here. Shreveport leading Austin 2 1. The Ice Bats in first place in the East. The Cotton Kings and the Rattlers tied at 1. And we'll get to the other scores in just a moment. Uh, the, this is good geography for you folks uh, for the state of Texas and in the Louisiana. I'm from the Midwest. And this is uh, the last few years. It's been news to me to see hockey teams in Amarillo, Lubbock in San Angelo, but it's great uh, here in the state of Texas. It is, it's good for me too, because uh, being new to uh, Texas uh, uh, and only being in Dallas, I I'm not sure where all the other places are, but uh, hoping to go visit a few. Well, this is easy. It's just about 35, 40 minutes away here in the Fort Worth, Texas tonight. Here's the play now back of the goal. Brahma's take over. Wooler in the slot. Cuts in on goal. Shoots. There was traffic in front. The rebound. Brahma's player knocked down. Harris has it, and I believe the net dislodged. Don't think there's going to be a penalty, but Fort Worth sending three men in, and it's all over the Corpus Christi goal, and, and Eddie Skazik. They, uh, both teams are really coming back and, and taking away the front of the net. Uh, the Fort Worth player walks right out, has a great opportunity, but there seems to be 10 people standing in the little painted blue crease where there's no room to score. New Mexico, the Scorpions in a tie game. Lake Charles leading Tupelo earlier saw a score with El Paso. The Buzzards, they're going to have a press conference on Tuesday. They've been known as the Buzzards since joining the WPHL, but they've had some struggles, and they're going to change their team name on Tuesday in the middle of the season. So we'll uh, have a new name in El Paso. Currently, the Buzzards will see what their new name is on Tuesday. You don't see that too often in the middle of the season. Here's a play out back of the goal. The Ice Raids and Brian Poole out of Colgate University in the collegiate ranks. Tries to make a play. Loose on left wing and Wickenheiser can't clear it out. Zacharias trying to fight for the loose puck. It's finally taken by the defenseman Dumoulin who clears it off the boards to center ice and it went off I believe a high stick perhaps uh, right in front of the Brahma players bench and Todd Vallon would have liked to have seen that play continue. A little bit of holding along those side boards with uh, Poole holding on to uh, Dewey and it's uh, it's hard to score when the guy's got you pinned against the glass and got you in a bear hug. It's, and it wastes a lot of energy trying to get away from it. And that's happened to you over a number of years, right? And is there any trick to getting away from it? Uh, no, you just kind of play dead like a bear is attacking <laughs> you. But the coach doesn't like that because he thinks you should fight through everything. And he doesn't realize how much energy you <laughs> Right, right. Uh, that's not your current coach. That's just coaches <laughs> in general, right? Uh, uh, that's all coaches. Hear that, guys? That yeah, play at center ice and the puck loose. Brahma's take over and Woolard on the left wing side. Brahma's take over. Ross Harris cuts in on net. Tries to work it free. Does dump it to the slot, but broken up with the Corpus uh, Christi blue or defense in the uh, 
in front of Skazik, and the Brahmas play it to the defense. Five and a half minutes left second period. This game is really on pretty smoothly. A few scraps and two goals, and we're tied late in period number two. Ice Rays try and work it free, but the Brahmas recover, and it just floated high in the air by Woolard into the Corpus Christi zone. Harris trailing the play. They try and work it in front, but Bumstead able to just play it along the far boards, and the Ice Rays just flip it to center ice. Brahmas. It's a little scrambly right now, but... Uh... Brahma's actually in a change here. Both teams on the change and attack, and the ice rays take over. Hearn, lead pass, breakout, Komalaya, poke check beautifully. A beautiful play by, I believe, Russ at the Fort Worth defense. Great poke check. Dowie now for Fort Worth. He scored the lone goal in. His shot off is sticking up into the far side off the uh, curtain behind the Corpus Christi goal and Dowie who scored that one goal seems to have some momentum and try to take a long shot into the Corpus Christi territory and we'll take another look. Russ made another nice defensive play and that's how uh, Dowie got this chance to break through center ice and uh, he tried to take the big back scratcher and uh, ended up in the curtain. Back scratcher, I like that one, and uh, I'm sure they get some other nicknames for those big windups, <laughs> right? Uh, sure, if I asked you for the night, you'd come up with a few more. Shots on goal, 22-15 Brahmas. Again, and a lot of good ones, too. If they could only get in there and get the ones lying there after the initial shot, uh, this could be a 2-3-1 game. See some uh, Central Texas uh, jerseys here. The uh, Stampede, uh, no longer the WPHL. They've come up to watch a game tonight. Here's play at the defense, quick little wrist shot, stick the side by Skazik, and the play now back of the goal. We have Jeff Bowerman to work for the Stampede alongside here tonight uh, in our press box. We appreciate all his help this evening. Jeff Kent in the penalty box. Uh, Dan Burgess, our assistant general manager, working the crowd here this evening. So a lot of activity here in Fort Worth. The play now back of the goal. Ice Rays trying to work it free on the far side. Hearn on his backhand plays it just out of the reach of Dowie and cleared to center ice. Brahma's back after it, so again, much of the play recently in the center ice area, but now back of the Fort Worth goal. Fort Worth it, looks like they're starting to get a little more physical again like they were early. Three on two break if they work it out. Here's Dowie, left wing side, Zacharias, drop pass, Dowie, in for Zacharias in front of the goal, and just shot wide off the backhand. And off the back boards, in fact, but Hearn controls. Good breakout for Fort Worth as Hearn has no other choice but to just dump it in. That was an excellent three-on-two well played, and then a trailing defensive coming in almost puts in a uh, play off the rebound. Here's a chance now for the ice race. Rolling shot off the shoulder of Lori. At the middle of the blue line, it's flicked behind the Fort Worth goal. Three and a half minutes to go in the period. Harney trying to jam it loose. They fight for it ferociously into the corner. The ice race gain possession. Little flip chance for Prasnick blocked off the defense. Hungel clears into the far side. John Frappier trying to make a play. Deep into the forward zone. Harney for the Brahmas out of St. Lawrence University. And the Brahmas play it free to center ice. Chance for Fort Worth. Here's Woolard in. Reese shot. Blocker saved by Skazik. And up back behind the goal. Woolard really with a great burst of energy. But Skazik able to get that waffle on it to save a goal. Nice patience by Johnson breaking out of his own end. Okay, we're going to take a break. One apiece here in Fort Worth. <laughs> Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy-duty pickup you can get. And the 2001 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Silverado Heavy Duty. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lovett Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the convention center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. Brett Hall alongside. We're pleased to have him. I'm Mike Barrack. Three minutes to go, second period, one apiece. Want to thank Howard Zuckerman and Associates. Howard in the truck tonight. 
I thank the people at Channel 49, Rick Mills and Kelly Kirkpatrick for all the work they've done. Tony Samanovich in the truck with Telfax tonight. Here's Plale on the far, or the near corner, I should say, in the ice rays. Working for Bumstead. He plays to the Fort Worth blue line, and the Brahmas gain possession. Cabana on the outlet pass for Wooler. In on his off wing. Wooler tries to center for Cardwell, but the pass off the mark and broken up with the ice rays defense. And icing, I believe, will be called here as Cabana touches it. Icing is the call, and the faceoff will come all the way back. And you love it for a coach to have that faceoff deep in their zone, the opponent's zone, with the down to two and a half minutes to go in period number two. That last three on two, uh, if he would have just moved it a little bit quicker, he, he tried a good play, uh, but waited too long, and uh, the defenseman got a little piece of him, and he wasn't able to get enough wood uh, to make that uh, cross pass. I think he should have laid it back to the defenseman and let him walk into it. Justin Cardwell, who will take the draw, played last year with the green growl of the East Coast Hockey League. He uh, played at Western Michigan University and from Kalamazoo, Michigan, not when he was playing, I believe Ken Hitchcock was the coach of the Michigan K-Wings, so he knows uh, Mr. Hitchcock fairly well from Kalamazoo. Sure, and uh, you know, it's not just the players, even the coaches start off with the minors and uh, work their way up. Ken Hitchcock coached in junior hockey and also coached with the Michigan K-Wings, as mentioned, of the International Hockey League. And Houston Arrows of the IHL are in this state. Here's Komalayev moving in. A wrist shot, and Laurie says no. Komalayev, a former Brahma. Laurie, a former Brahma who's come back to Fort Worth, and Laurie falls on top of the loose puck on the scoring opportunity for the former Fire and Brahma. Well, the scouting report before the game for me was that the goalies for Fort Worth were struggling, but I'll tell you what, uh, Mr. Laurie's been very rock solid tonight, and uh, at times uh, the shots aren't that many, but they've been all quality and if it wasn't for him, I uh, don't know how many goals that uh, Corpus Christi could have. He uh, twice has had more than 30 victories, including 97-98 when the Brahmins reached the finals of the Western Professional Hockey League and won the Governor's Cup for the best record in the WPHL. Here's played at center ice, and the ice rays gain possession. And the uh, uh, puck loose at the defense, and the ice rays gain possession on the far board. It's chipped right back into Fort Worth territory. And Laurie himself sweeps it free on left wing. And the ice rays flick it right back into the Fort Worth territory. At the defense, it's clear to center for Ross Harris out of his reach. Under two minutes to go in the period. And Corpus gained possession. 1-1. One, one, under two minutes to go in the frame. Promise Gorwich tries to work it free for Harris behind the net. Chops it behind the net for Dowie. Tries to center one. Broken up for the Corpus Christi team, and they clear it up into the stands with a minute 37 to go in the period. The Brahmas keep working hard, trying to keep the puck deep in the ice race territory. Yeah, I think if they, uh, when they get it down low, instead of just grabbing it and throwing it, if they just hold on just for a second longer, uh, get a little better control and let the guy get open uh, in front of the net, the, uh, things will click a little bit easier for them. I'm sure that's tough, too. They get four check, but they worry that there's somebody behind them. And I guess I know for you, it's probably easier said than done with that patience to hold on to the puck because you're worried that someone's going to be right on you. Well, I have the same problem because I'm usually not down there. I'm usually up by that Coors Light sign on the ice and uh, uh, hanging out there making everyone else do the work for me. And that's right in the slot for Brett Hall, and that's where he scored a lot of his NHL goals. Here's play at the right point. Willard for Fort Worth. Slap shot. That's off the backboard. The Brahmas try and work it free. Hardwell with the one-hander tries to center it. Lock away at the defense. Fort Worth digging. Late in period number two, it's cleared to center, and Tilson circles around. Good Deep. defensive play by Wickenheiser coming back to clear the, the centering play. Yeah, the uh, ice rays were back, and the uh, Brahmas uh, cleared to the ice rays blue line, and now it's right back to center ice. Froppy with under a minute to go in the period. Plays it free on the left wing side. Wickenheiser shoots. That's over top of the goal. He went for the backhand, and the Brahmas on the outlet pass to center ice. Here's big Craig Johnson. Motoring in across the line, tries to feather a pass for Woolard, deflected behind the net for the ice race with a total of 40 seconds to go in the frame. And puck cleared right back into the Brahma's territory. Laurie himself plays him the boards on the right wing side. 30 seconds to go in the frame. And out the center ice with Dumoulin gains possession, flicks it right back in. 23 seconds to go in the period. They clear it. 
Ice Rays trying to jam it loose. Brown is pushing on the boards on the right wing. They got time for a yeah. rush. 15 yeah. seconds to go, but the outlet pass off the mark, broken up by the Ice Rays. They clear it in. Just 10 seconds to go in the period. I suspect we'll conclude this period in a 1 1 standoff. Five seconds to go in the period. Cleared by Fort Worth to center ice. 2 1, and that does it. The period concludes. And we have gone through a total of 40 minutes. The Brahmas tie it up one apiece at the end of two periods. We'll be back in just a moment on K-Star. What's in the bag, Howie? Just some cool new stuff I got at Radio Shack. I love the changes they're making. And you ought to know about change. You went from being a great football player to a great football commentator. The stuff in the bag is mine, Terry. Oh, and you know, even with all the new brands at Radio Shack, they're still the same people good at answering questions and explaining things. Yeah. And even though you made the Hall of Fame, yeah. you're still the same you. The stuff in the bag is still mine, Terry. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. You want to take a break? Yeah, I'm burning up. So, are you having as good a time as I am? Oh, do you want to go somewhere more quiet? No, don't you find me attractive? Coors Light, frost brewed at the edge of freezing. Did you say something? I see coats. They're closing! Hand over the coats, sir! Nice and easy now. Let's have it. Look. There's a lot of people in line here who need to do their banking. Yeah! Hey, buddy, they're just normal people like you who just don't get out of work in time to get to the bank. So, come on. Their kids could go hungry, you know? Look, Regis! Ooh. Okay, people, there's nothing for you here. Let's move in an orderly fashion to the Bank United inside Kroger. They're open late, they're nice, and you won't feel like this. <laughs> What you do with the savings is your business. Big Juicy Chicken is ours. Now, eight big pieces dark, family mash, $5.99. Country fried steak, mash and biscuit, just $1.99. Mike Barrack here at the uh, Fort Worth Convention Center. 1-1 one, one between the Brahmas and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. Brett Hulls enjoyed the uh, broadcast here tonight. And he is in, and his teammates were outstanding, of course, two years ago. They brought the Stanley Cup here to the state of Texas and into the Metroplex. And a lot of excitement here in Dallas and, of course, in Fort Worth. Great opportunity to bring the Stanley Cup down to this state. Last year, Andy Moog, the president of the Brahmas, felt it would be important to recognize the stars here at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the, for, for the fans who follow the stars here in Cowtown. And we'll take a look at the Dallas Stars and the Fort Worth Brahmas. This at the start of the season last year. Let's take a look. Saturday night at the Fort Worth Convention Center. More than 9,000 fans pack the house to cheer on the hometown Brahmas. Even a few Dallas stars are watching. Actually, many of the fans here tonight came not only to see the Brahmas, but also the Dallas stars. I'm not a hockey fan, but to see the Stanley Cup and the history behind it, it's enough to bring me out here. The stars take to the ice in style during the first intermission. Number 12, right wing, Former Stars goalie Andy Moog has something that belongs to the Stars, if only he can find it. I'm just going to take a look in the trunk here and see if I can come up with it. You just go with it.
originally talked to the Stars, and then we talked to the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame, and they both uh, uh, agreed uh, after some persuasion. We talked to them a few times, but uh, we were very fortunate that the schedule worked out and we were able to get it over for this weekend. Some great teammates that I had the good fortune of playing with for several years, uh, and I called on a favor, and they all came over, and uh, uh, hopefully they had a very good time. Pretty cool because I watched him win the game and everything, and it was kind of cool seeing Belfort beat Dominique Hasek, one of the best goalers, and it's pretty cool. You've been lifting the Stanley Cup a number of times. Are you, aren't you getting tired of it by now? It's getting old. We've got to give it back to Toronto, and hopefully we'll get it again in June. That's not bad luck after the new season started to, to keep celebrating other cups. No, it's a year-round thing, so uh, until someone takes it away from us, we'll try to enjoy it as much as we can. Tonight, the stars let loose and have fun. Two. We go celebrate with me. <laughs> but tomorrow, it's back to work towards the goal of repeating as champions. Ginger Jeffrey for the Ranger Stars Report. Well, I, I decided tonight's the night I'm going to pop the question. So, did you get the ring yet? No. I had a better idea. I wanted to get her something that says, I'm really in this for the long haul. Train. What? I'm making a commitment here. The sleek, 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. Uh, hot. The side you show the world is up to you. Monte Carlo, we'll be there. Friday, February 16th, join Dallas Mavericks Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash at the Fort Worth Convention Center for the Brahmas and the Lovett Cotton Kings. The game starts with Nash and Nowitzki dropping the ceremonial first puck at 7.30. It will then be available for autographs during the game. Receive $3 off tickets at the convention center box office with any Mavs ticket stub. Or you can purchase $13 and $15 seats at all Metroplex Albertson stores. Or by calling Star Tickets at 888-597-STAR. That's Mavs Night with the Brahmas, February 16th. Hey, she goes. They're closing. Hand over the coat, sir. Nice and easy now. Let's have it. Look. There's a lot of people in line here who need to do their banking. Yeah. Hey, buddy, they're just normal people like you who just don't get out of work in time to get to the bank. So, come on. Their kids could go hungry, you know? Look, Regis! Ooh. Okay, people, there's nothing for you here. Let's move in an orderly fashion to the Bank United inside Kroger. They're open late, they're nice, and you won't feel like this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fort Worth Convention Center, the Fort Worth Brahmas and the Corpus Christi Ice Rays. I'm Mike Barak, and alongside a gentleman, an all-star in the uh, Western Professional Hockey League, 54 goals for the Fort Worth Brahmas last season, Ross Harris. Ross, it's been a tough season for you and the Brahmas this year, real tough after a, a great year for you, both personally uh, a year ago and having a, having a great season. Talk to us a little bit about the Brahmas this year. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, it started out with me. I was in Russia at the start of the year, so um, uh, I've been playing hockey for an extra three months as well, and uh, things didn't work out there, and then I came back here and you know to a struggling team. And, uh, really, you know, it's, it's, it's been a tough year. Uh, we haven't gotten the wins. You know, it's, it's good to see that the guys are still, still trying and putting forth the effort. But, yeah, it's definitely been a trying year for us so far. Well, talk to us a little bit about uh, playing in Russia. You played with uh, Steve Plouffe, the former uh, Brahma and fire goaltender. Talk to us about your experience in Russia. Yeah, well, I had the opportunity to uh, go over to uh, Russia with, with Steve uh, over the summer. And, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to it, a good, uh, good opportunity. But uh, things didn't work out quite as well as I planned over there. Um, I'm not sure if anyone, you know, been to Russia, but uh, it's, it's, it's not quite uh, North American style. And, uh, you know, things didn't work out, and I just decided that it would be best if I uh, head back to uh, Texas, where, you know, I welcome in open arms and uh, really enjoyed my uh, time down here. So... It was good to get back here, and unfortunately, things didn't work out in Russia. There's a lot of people that aren't uh, familiar with the Western Professional Hockey League watching the broadcast tonight. In the amenities in Russia, the Russian leagues, uh, that probably is as much a crazy scenario as, uh, as just the game itself. Talk to us a little bit about uh, off the ice in Russia and how uh, some of the uh, tougher experiences for yourself. Well, it was definitely a learning experience. Uh, Russia is, is quite a poor country. 
I think the average salary over there is one hundred and fifty dollars a month. So uh, just from that standpoint, I, you can kind of get a picture in your mind. Um, travel wise, uh, I lived on the far east, so every time we flew anywhere, we'd have to fly eight hours and over seven time zones. So we're f we're doing a lot of travel, and then you get there and you get on a bus or a train. So uh, the accommodations weren't uh, obviously up to the standards of, of over.